What's up, gang? This Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milligan, and Villa Villa Trilligan, and we are back on Fate Stay Night. Last episode, Shiro brought home Ilya and was like, yo, you a little girl, and you don't got no protection, so we gonna protect you. We walked in on Saber in the bath. That shit was, like, fucking fantastically awesome. Love to see that shit. Uh, we learned about projection magic, and apparently, like, we really... We could die doing that, but you know, that boy Shiro, he don't give a fuck. So now we're getting into day 13 and my game is lagging for some odd reason. It's gonna piss me off. February, February 13th, Fate 14, Moonlight 1. The sky is gray and the hill crimson with corpses. The heavy clouds drift away heralding the battle's end. I know this scene. I've seen it so many times now. This is one of Saber's battles. She fought and won so many victories. Scenes like this are almost commonplace for her. Afterwards, she will return to her castle, where her victory will be praised and celebrated. Then she will prepare for the next battle. This is just life for her. It is the only it is only one of the 12 great battles she fought and so she does not truly remember victory so much as she ex just accepts it as a fact i think she's misguided this is not a dream it's just a cold reality her past that can't be changed the moment she drew the sword she stopped being human she took over for her father as a feudal lord and became a king with many knights. She was known as King Arthur in Altria. The life of the girl who once aspired to be a knight changed so radically. No, was forced to end her life as she knew it, might be a better way to put it. In that instant, the girl who, has so, who still had such childlike features ceased to be and became the king of knights. She acted like she was the king's son. The ruler of territories and knights had to be male. Only her father and the mage knew the king was female. She covered herself in iron and hid that truth for the rest of her life. I don't know why I never realized the implications until now. As much, as pub as much public exposure as she had, she managed to pass herself off as male the whole time. The sheer suffering she likely endured must have been incredible, but a simple observer could never really understand. Time passes. 10 years worth of memories as king and there was only one common thread that entire time even when she's on the throne even when she's walking through the hallway even when she's on the battlefield not a soul spoke to her even the round table filled as it was with bo knights boasting of their valor always fell silent the moment the king appeared so that's what it meant she was merely tolerated as an idol many knights looked down on altria with their boyish appearance and were ultimately not comfortable in trusting her with their blades but because she managed to draw the sacred sword that no one else could they had to obey even if only to keep up appearances and just accepted the disgrace believed it would pass sacred sword or no the king was merely a child even with merlin's support the king would have surely fail eventually when that happens they need only take the sacred sword from her and select a new king that's probably what most of the knights thought, but that's not how it went. The knights only just reaching adulthood. The knight only just reaching adulthood was a flawless king. She enforced peace among the squabbling lords and fought off invaders as well. Of course, this wasn't due to the sacred sword's powers. The sacred sword only protects the king. The knight, on the other hand, protects their nation. And through her deeds, she always was able to remain control. She was always able to main, con maintain control of her knights. The sacred sword protects her only from her enemies. It does nothing to help her hold sway against the hearts of her subjects. She worked herself to the bone to be the ideal king to all. At that point, the kings had no choice but to obey. They held their dissatisfaction for the young king in check because the king was truly perfect. She strived to be the ideal king. The only condition for the knight's support was that their king be exactly that, the ideal king. There was no room for Altria to be a human being. 
She could be a king and only a king. The peerless knight who drew the sacred sword, who stopped aging from that moment, and who went on to win 12 great wars. The more perfect she became, the more people stayed away from her. As this continued, the king grew more and more isolated. That's, that was who she was. But she did well. In fact, she did too well. She defeated her enemies and minimized her own side's casualties. No matter the battle, sacrifices must be made. So she believed it was her duty to make sacrifices to bolster her, enemy, her army and to defeat the enemy without wasting lives. She would strip the resources from one village to prepare her army, then defeat the invaders before they could strike their land, perhaps late saving 10 villages. That was the king's approach and it proved the best strategy at the time. But the knights must not have been happy. To them, only the foreign invaders should have died, and the only true victory is made without any such sacrifices. There shouldn't be any need to sacrifice a territory before battle. They were going to win regardless, so the sacrifices were pointless. There wouldn't be any sacrifices, so the king's actions were a waste. It was, of course, total nonsense. Once battle began, the thought spared not a thought for those little villages. No one thought twice about trampling the villages. Protecting them was never a consideration. The knights claimed there was nothing to be done when the enemy destroyed such villages. But to them, but to let them to be destroyed is a great crime. Obviously, she knew that. But a king cannot worry about their personal feelings. She had to kill her emotions to make her decisions, and her knights had to suppress their own feelings to obey. And so sacrifices are made, and that string of victory stabilizes the nation. And in return, animosity for the king grew. King Gotha just doesn't understand how people feel. So one knight was heard to say as they left the castle. What a ridiculous story. She was expected not to be human, but they hated her precisely because she didn't have human emotions. The age of war continued. The animosity of the knights, who had been dissatisfied with the king, only grew more so after the knight fell. After the knight left, they forced her to deal with every foreign and domestic enemy in hopes of pushing her over the edge. Collapse was imminent. If these many problems confronting the nation were never resolved, it would crumble. Even if all of them were to be resolved, what awaits is more of the same. But that did not concern the king. Even should she be abandoned, feared, or betrayed, she would remain steadfast. Because she had long since made up her mind, she abandoned her emotions the moment she decided to draw that sword. This happened long, long ago. Knights from across the nation gathered to draw this, gathered to try to draw the sword from the stone, but none of them could do it. And the knights instead showcased their skill on horseback, eager to crown the best among the king. Best among them, king. The knights flocked to the arena in droves. The sword and stone lay outside, forgotten. From afar, it looked more like a festival. Even in the distance, the sound of valiant cavalrymen clashing is audible. The knights clash in the distance, and the rock lay forgotten. What was going through the girl's mind as she stood in front of the rock? Before she realized that an unknown maid stood behind her. Think before you take hold of that. He tries to stop her for her own good. The moment you take that sword, you will cease to be human. He also warned her that many would hate her and that she would die a gruesome death. She must have been terrified. The maid showed her the future. He showed her the end she would meet if she drew that sword. It only made her all the more determined. Even after seeing that future, she only gave a firm nod. The mage asked again if that was what she wanted. I saw many people smiling, so this cannot be a mistake. She took the sword in her hand. The mage looked troubled and turned away. Miracles come at a price. You will pay with what is most precious to you. He departed with those prophetic words. That's right. She just wanted to protect everyone. But to do so, she had to abandon her desire to protect people. She could not protect her country as its king if she still has a human heart. Even knowing this, she drew the sword. 
Even knowing this, she vowed to live as a king. So no matter what happens, she will remain steadfast. She abandoned her human heart. She was willing to give that up to protect her nation. Who could have known the girl made such a noble oath? She was determined to fight. Come what may or however might end. She still decided to fight. Even if an inevitable solitary doom awaited her. And her end did come. The Battle of Camlin. King Gotha set out on a campaign and one of her knights usurped her throne, splitting the nation in two and sparking a terrible conflict. Legend has it that this battle brought an end to knighthood and chivalry. She killed every knight who once served her and invaded the land she fought to defend. All the knights who followed her were gone and her own body lay injured and immobile. There was no one left around her. As ever, nothing has changed. All she had in her heart was the pride of a king. She'd known about this ending. Still, she believed there was something to be gained from this failure, which is why she kept fighting without ever failing or disgracing herself. She had not regrets. If she were to have one, it would be seeing her nation in ruin. She raised her gaze. Maybe she would be able to see her castle in the distance from this hill. She saw only the aftermath of the battle, a dense forest, and a lake to which she must return. That's right. The hill she'd meant to charge over has become a wall she can't climb. Strength left her body. For the first time, she loosened her grip on the sacred sword. And that's where it ended. It was only natural that the dream would end here, since there's nothing beyond that moment in her memories. And that is why this end cannot be rewritten. She worked so hard and she was resented, betrayed. Nobody understood that she loved her people more than her nation. She came to be known as a merciless king. She was never rewarded or understood. On top of the crimson stain, sword strewn hill, the girl sat on the edge of death, isolated and betrayed. I wake to the sound of rain. It's morning. Oh. I grip my spinning head and sit up. It's just before six o'clock. The rain patters softly outside. That dream I just had. No, there's no doubt about it. It was Saber's past. It was the end of her life a long, long time ago. Nothing can change it now. I grit my teeth. I can hear them grinding. I don't know why, but I'm so fucking mad. Damn. What the hell was that? Just thinking about it pisses me off. Her past. The fact that she didn't think anything of it. Me thinking the dream was nothing before. Ah, I hate it. I don't even understand why, but it's pissing me off. I don't like it. I don't like it one damn bit. No matter how you slice it, her life was unfair. So, so unfair. She only wanted to help people. She wanted nothing for herself. But as hard as she worked, nobody understood her. Not even at the very end. That really pisses me off. It's so unfair. That's right. If she worked harder than anyone and she doesn't receive any reward, it's all just a bunch of crap. She should be rewarded for everything she's done. But... How could that happen at this point? I, what? Just tell her she did a good job? Do I tell her how wonderful she was? Of course not. Not that so simple could do her justice. I know. There's only one answer. That's right. For sure to be rewarded. If she's to be rewarded, the work she devoted her life to should be repaid. All she needs happiness to match all the battles she fought. But then, what can I do? I'm out of ideas. I don't have any idea how to make people happy. I'm so useless at this kind of thing. My entire life I've wanted to be a champion of justice, but all I ever did was lend a hand here and there. I believed everyone around me would be happy if I just helped people, or rather, 
I couldn't face myself if I didn't believe that. Helping people and saving people are very much not the same thing. If I don't understand the difference myself, I can't possibly reward Saber. Breakfast is the same as usual. I get the sense that Saber and Tosaka are pretty adaptable since they've already gotten used to Ilya being here. So, what are you going to do, Shiro? There are three masters left. The Holy Grail War isn't exactly never-ending, so you should think about making a move soon. Always being the one reacting to everyone else isn't a good look. So Sokka's right. There's nothing wrong with me physically, and Saber's completely healed. We should be done resting as of yesterday. You're right. Say we need to make a move, but it'll have to be at night. We're going to do the same things we've been doing during the day. Are you serious? Well, I guess it wouldn't do us any good if we just aimlessly wander around with no information about our opponents. So, Saber's gonna beat you up again today? I'm gonna continue my sword training with Saber. She's like, you ain't have to put it like that. Like, <laughs> you ain't have to put it like that. That's what we've been doing every day. And a master should be always be prepared for battle. Rin, what Shiro and I are doing is training. The way you phrase it may cause a misunderstanding. Well, actually, yeah, I'm gonna get beaten up by Saber in the morning, like usual. Shiro, if you describe it that way as well, you put me in something of a difficult position. Huh? Oh, sorry, Saber, I wasn't listening. I love that dumbass face. <laughs> I love that stupid ass face they make, bro. When, when Tosaka's like, <laughs> is, is Saber that shit right there? How, how'd you do? <laughs> I love this stupid ass face. As I was saying, Ren's choice of words was too harsh. What is the matter with you, Shiro? You lack vigor this morning. The breakfast you prepared was also bland. Were you in the shed until late against last night? Saber may be questioning me, but there's no real bite to it. She just called your fool ass. I can sense that she trusts me, which makes it even harder to meet her gaze now. If our eyes meet, I can't help thinking of that scene in the hill. Fine, I will put some life into you later on. So we're going to be training at the dojo again today, all right? Yeah, what about you, Ilya? Me? I'll do the same as yesterday. I don't like getting all wet in the rain, so I don't want to go outside. Got it. That's perfect. I'd rather you stay in the house, which is dangerous to go outside. Yeah. If you make a bento again like yesterday, I wouldn't mind joining you. Huh? Seems like I Ilya took a liking to the bento yesterday. I'm a little embarrassed that something so simple pleased her. But at the same time, I'm glad to know Ilya enjoyed the bento I made. And Saber looks like she's about to fucking stab me. Saber. Saber, calm down. Saber, calm down. Saber, look, look, Saber, calm down. Don't stab me, all right? Hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Saber. Oh, calm down, Saber. Calm down, Altria. Don't pull out the, don't, don't pull out the Excalibur. <laughs> oh, so it'll be the exact same as yesterday. I'm going to my room. I have some things to look up, but come by in the afternoon. There's something I want to talk to you about. Are you researching something? Yep, I think you might have noticed, but something's been going on at Ryudo Temple since yesterday. They've been collecting magical energy really diligently this whole time, but that stopped. Something's definitely going on. And I think that of the remaining masters, our biggest threat is the one at Ryudo Temple. I'll send out a familiar to try, to try to find out what's going on inside. And should you not focus on your investigation? I do not see any need for you to take time off to teach Shiro. Well, then I'm sorry, but you're just gonna have to bear with me on that. I'm still worried about Shiro, so I can't just leave him to his own devices. He is a little stupid after all. It might be one thing for him to die at the hands of an enemy, but since I'm his teacher, it bothered me if he did something dumb and got himself killed because he messed up his magecraft. Yes, you're absolutely correct. 
Something must have been wrong with me. I do not know why I would have believed your lessons to be unnecessary. Oh, the reasoning is pretty simple there, but it's best not to talk about it. Well, good luck with your morning training. Chiro's pretty resilient, so it's probably best you just beat him within an inch of his life. <laughs> He's like, no, I don't want to do that. That's too much. <laughs> and with that, Tosaka leaves the room. Saber. Take what Tosaka says with a grain of salt. She, she can say that because she's never been hit by you. I tell her just in case. For some reason, she seems pleased. Don't worry, I know. I understand your body better than she does. Hold on. Hold on. You understand my body? You want to understand more? Hold on. She responds calmly. Hold on. Don't say stuff like that. You'll make me horny. Why are you so close to me? I'm not Iligusville. What is the matter? Are you not going to eat Iligusville? You have eaten less than a third of what you did yesterday. This shit nasty! I can't eat this bullshit! This shit nasty as fuck! Nigga, I'm, I'm throwing this shit away! I just can't eat this. I can't eat spicy food. I do not think it's particularly spicy. The spices used to go well with the chicken. I said I don't like mustard. Just eat this for me, will you? In return, I'll eat your strawberry for you. That's not a fair trade. What? What are you doing, Iliasville? Hey, return that this instant. You may not have that. If you want something sweet, there's apple pie. What the f- Ilya and Saber sit next to each other, bickering like two close sisters. It's just past noon. The three of us sit and face each other, eating lunch together just like yesterday. Alright, it's, it's not just lunch that's the same as yesterday. Our training today was as well. Today, though, is even more awkward. I don't know how to explain it, but something in my chest stirs whenever I face Saber. I find myself unable to rush at her with the same desperation I used to. Bro, just kiss already! Damn! It's not just me. Saber's been acting weird too. It used to be that she never let an opening go by. The last couple days, she just waited for me to make a move. Which has meant the two of us just kind of ended up staring at each other for a while. What's going on with you two? You're not very fun to watch now. Ilya's criticism helps us get back into the swing of things. I managed to go after Saber, but it ended pretty much the same. She batted aside my half-assed attack, and, but didn't bother countering. Since she didn't follow up, I whirled on Saber, lunged again, and was once again more, once more repelled. Though again, she didn't counterattack. Our lackluster session ended about ten minutes ago. Once again, it was Saber's suggestion, and we began our lunch break. We're having the same thing we did yesterday: sandwiches. I figured it wouldn't ex do. Fuck! I figured it. Fuck! Fuck! I figured. Fuck! I figured it wouldn't do to make them exactly the same as yesterday. So I used a few other ingredients. Everyone seems happy. Ilya is excited over the colorful sandwiches, and Saber takes a deep breath, deep breath, preparing her, preparing for her meal. I think that's Saber's way of showing her enthusiasm. It's much rowdier than yesterday. It's raining and the hardwood floor is cold, but it also feels like a picnic. Ah, that is enough, Ilyasville. If you eat like that, you will dirty your clothes, honestly. This is what happens when you mimic Shiro and try to eat it in one bite. Your mouth is small, so you should eat more daintily. Shut your ass up! You're the one who doesn't understand, Saber. It's even less polite to worry about manners with a meal like this. This is a pick a nigga. I mean, this is a pick a nick. So if you think, if you think, if this is how you should be eating, this is fuck. This is a picnic, so this is how you should be eating, right, Shiro? Ilya happily munches on a sandwich, and Saber reluctantly wipes Ilya's mouth with a napkin. That tickle, Saber! Ah. Uh, well, I didn't see this coming. Saber and Ilya seem to have warmed up to each other. This is a surprise. Are you not going to push me away, Iligasville? Why? I love when people are nice to me. Yeah, if anyone else tried to touch me, I'd touch me, I'd kill them. But Saber's pretty, so I'll allow it. 
And we're sharing a meal now. If Saber likes me, I like her too. Oh, that's so sweet! It's so simple for Ilya. Saber, clearly taken aback, stares at Ilya dumbfounded. Even I, just a spectator as this unfolds, am caught off guard by Ilya's smile. What? You don't, don't, you don't think this is fun, Saber? Oh, no, I don't... I'm having tons of fun. It's raining outside, this place is so simple and bleak, and there's nothing here that I've ever wanted. But just being here is fun. It's much nicer than being all alone. Are you not having fun, Saber? Something in, shut the fuck up. Something in Ilya's smile must have struck Saber. Saber sighs deeply and looks back at her. Oh, that's adorable! You are correct. I am also enjoying being here. She sounds bright. Then Saber smiles in a way I've never seen from her. Hold on. Hold on. Oh! Oh! My heart! I don't know why, but I'm getting emotional. That smile was great. It was for herself and herself alone. It's not the usual smile I see from her whenever she's protecting someone. It's a smile of sheer happiness for her, from her. Shiro, what does that look for? Did something good happen? Huh? No, nothing. Was I making a funny face? Yeah, you were. You made a face like a father, like you're watching over us from afar. I don't like it. <laughs> oh, why? I don't understand what she's talking about, but I guess I was just smiling. I see. Well, something good ha something good happened, so I guess I didn't realize I was smiling. Something good, was it? Yeah, I like the way you smile just now, Saber. Seeing it made me happy. That <laughs> dumbass face. He's like, fucking bewildered. And not, what an odd thing to say. That makes you happy, Shiro. Yeah, I guess I like seeing you smile like that. Saber nods so she doesn't seem convinced. And then, I don't know what came over her, but she smiles and lifts her head. I see. Then it must be the other way around, Shiro. Huh? What are you talking about? I am happier to see you smiling. If you keep smiling, that is good enough for me. I can't meet Saber's gaze. That smile would make anyone lighthearted, lightheaded. I managed to calm myself down and glance sidelong at Saber. She calmly resumes eating her picnic lunch. Nothing to worry about here. There should be nothing to worry about, yet something's bothering me. I am happy here to see you smiling. And that smile I saw for the first time. It seemed like she was contradicting herself. I listened to the rain in Tosaka's room. Today, under the pretense of a magecraft lesson, she performed yet another physical examination like yesterday. She gave me more medicine, then checked all my magic circuits. It's not that I mind doing this. I just don't like the feeling that I'm not doing anything productive. She tells me not to move so she can see what happens to me, but that doesn't mean I can't talk. Tosaka, do you have a minute? I call out to her as I sit in my meditative pose. Huh, what is it? It's about Saber. I really don't know how to explain it, but... I realize I haven't thought this through at all. It's not a question of what can I do for Saber. I haven't even thought about what I want to do for with her. I was just wondering what she wants to do. She never told us anything she wants to do for herself, so... You don't know what Saber's thinking. No, it's not that. I just don't know why she's so selfless. Yeah, I just don't know what to do about that. Huh. Well, you're right. The only thing she's done voluntarily is protect you. It may be a natural thing for a servant to do, but I can't blame you for thinking that she's thinking that since she's so dedicated to doing it. But that doesn't mean she's selfless. 
Saber is protecting you because protecting you helps fulfill her goal. Oh, I completely forgot about, forgot her reason for even becoming a servant. You're right. Saber wants the Holy Grail, so it's not like she doesn't have any goals. And that Holy Grail will grant his possessor, grant his possessor's wish. That means Saber at least has a wish she wants granted. I don't know what it is, but she wants it enough to become a servant. So she must have some hope of saving her. Like for example, she's here in, the t in this time period and the power of the Holy Grail can help her so she can stay here and live a second life. And she would have to wish for something if and she would have to wish for something that big just to make up for all the suffering and tragedy she endured. Oh, then it's actually pretty simple. Huh? You're all energetic all of a sudden. It's creeping me out. Were we talking about something fun for you to get all excited like this? Yeah, I am getting excited. And yeah, she wouldn't be fighting so hard unless it was for something real big. After all, Saber needs to fight for her own wish. I nod to myself. So Sokka, on the other hand, seems utterly bewildered. Emiya, sorry to rain on your parade, but you're jumping to the wrong conclusion. Saber's not fighting for her own sake. You understand that, right? Saber isn't like that. She doesn't want the Holy Grail for herself. What? What's your reasoning? I can't even ask that. I know. She met her final moments alone because she didn't have any desire for herself. So Saber wouldn't seek for her own salvation now. But still, I hoped otherwise even for a brief moment, so I pushed my disordered desire on her. Our conversation trails off. So this is I think the awkward silence is going to continue forever. This might be a boring story, but Archer actually said something similar to what you said. Huh? Archer? You mean your Archer? Yeah. I once asked him what his wish was. Do you know what he said? Oh, I wouldn't have the slightest idea. I never knew a single thing about the guy. Archer once declared that we were bound to be enemies anyway, so he made no effort to communicate with Saber or me, and yet, he may have been cynical, but he didn't seem to have the sort of, then he seemed to have the sort of, but he didn't seem the sort to have stupid objection, objectives in mind. Get this, you're gonna laugh. When I asked him what his wish was, he said, How about world, <laughs> I fucked it up! Hold on, start over. Hold on, I'll start it over. I'm gonna start it over. I'm gonna start it over. I'm gonna start it over. Get this, you're gonna laugh. When I asked him what his wish was, he said, How about world peace forever? It was so ridiculous, I couldn't help laughing. But then he got all weird and said, I knew you'd laugh. Well, you know, there's no meaning in gaining salvation from others. Fine, let's just say this was a joke and leave it at that. It made me think that that's probably why a guy like him became a heroic spirit to get ordered around by a girl like me. I see. He didn't look it, but he was a great proud knight in his own right. But don't get the wrong idea. If the Holy Grail really grants any wish, permanent world peace would be the worst one. If you know, you know. <laughs> If you know, you know. <laughs> it's just me, nothing happens. If there's no conflict in the world, that'd be as good as death. If nothing happens, the only thing to rot away from, the only thing is to rot away from stagnation. Uh, did you tell Archer that too? I did. And he said, that's what the wise would think. I agree, but I'm still gonna follow this dream, even if, even if it's the fool's dream. Then I pressed him about whether he had any other wishes, and he said, I do, but it's not a wish that should be granted by the Holy Grail, so I'll let you make your own wish in my place. Pretty pretentious, right? I bet he was quite the womanizer while he was alive. I really didn't get that impression from him, but what's your point here, Tosaka? Nothing in particular. I was just saying that there are, all di there are different kinds of servants. Is that so? Well, I guess it was good for me to know, so at least it was kind of helpful. 
Then let's move on to the next topic. Well, actually, this is mostly about Saber anyway. Huh? I do remember you saying you wanted to talk to me about something this morning. Yes, there's nothing big, but I was curious. Might be a bit late to the game, but do you know the legend of King Arthur? The legend of King Arthur. I've been reminded about I've been reminded of it more than enough in the past few days. I know as much as the next person. Although I didn't know King Arthur was a girl. Don't you dare tell me this whole fucking legend. They literally gave me a, a fucking they literally gave me a history lesson on King Arthur in the last three and four fucking chapters. Don't make me sit here and read her whole fucking story again. Right, her sex doesn't matter though. King Arthur being a girl wouldn't change the legend. As long as King Arthur managed to hide the fact from everyone, he would be treated as a man anyway. Fortunately, King Arthur had a mage called Merlin in his service. Merlin was truly devilish, half incubus actually. So it would have been easy for him to hide King Arthur's sex or to prepare a child which shouldn't have been born. Yeah, I bet. So? Merlin. 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 That's the name of that one character from Seven Deadly Sins. I haven't watched that shit in years. I wonder if it... Yo, anybody in here that was out, that finished Seven Deadly Sins, what was the ending like? Because I, I, I think I dropped it after season two. No, I dropped it when the, when I dropped it when the seven, the, the Heavenly Commanders pulled up. We got entered, we, yeah, we got introduced to the Heavenly Commanders, the, the commandments, right? And you know, that shit was all cool and all, but I don't think I ever finished that season. Yeah, they took the shit off Netflix, so I should stop watching it. Yeah, I haven't watched it since. Anybody who finished it, tell me what it was like. I, I'm curious, how did it end? Yeah, I bet, so. So my concern is the discrepancy between the legend and the saber we have in front of us. Emiya, do you know what Excalibur was? Why ask this now? Excalibur is a symbol of King Arthur. It's the sword fairies gave her. Famed for being able to cut through anything without ever dulling. Yeah, that's about what I figured you'd say, dumb fuck. So Sokka looks oddly triumphant. Huh? Is that a weird thing to say? Yes. You and King Arthur made the same mistake. If Merlin was around, he would probably mock you for being a fucking fool. Why is that? Um, the sword in the stone wasn't Excalibur. That sword broke. He later received another sword from the fairy in the lake, and that was Excalibur, right? Yeah. When King Arthur received Excalibur, Merlin asked, My king, which do you prefer? The sword or the sheath? King Arthur answered the sword without a moment's hesitation, but Merlin scolded the king for that. Do not mistake their worth. The sword may cut the enemies, but the sheath protects you. So long as you possess the sheath, you will not spill a single drop of blood nor sustain any injury. The sheath rather than the blade is what you should value. So Sokka skillfully acts out the parts of King Arthur and Merlin. Shut up! Look at you, Tosaka. You're getting into the part. So what's your point? Oh, come on. Do you still not get it? It means King Arthur is immortal. Excalibur is an invincible noble phantasm on both offense and defense. Which is why Saber should be able to heal immediately. Tosaka. Saber's wounds do heal. Yes, that's true. But Saber's self-healing abilities come from using a great amount of magical energy. And that sounds like it's separate from the sheath of the legendary Excalibur. I see. If you say so, it's probably true. Then here's my question. You said that King Arthur is immortal. So then why and how did King Arthur die? The legend ends with King Arthur's death, right? Huh? So Sokka's mouth drops open. After freezing up for a few seconds, she grinds her teeth and looks away. Oh right, Excalibur's sheath was stolen. Ah, rookie mistake right there, dumb fuck. I've forgotten, but according to legend, King Arthur's fate was sealed the moment the king lost the all-important sheath. 
So are you convinced now, Tosaka? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead and make fun of me all you want. I will make fun of you, dumbass. You come in here talking about you want to talk about something like it's all important and shit. And then when I say the correct shit, you think you right. You looking all triumphant, cocky, confident, and mocky and shit. And then you turn out to be wrong, dumbass. Oh my goodness. Fucking twin-tailed bitch. I love you though. She doesn't mean that. I can tell she's ready to kick me in the head the moment I laugh at her. Don't worry, I did it for you. It's all good as long as you understand now. But why did it bother you so much? It shouldn't matter to you whether Saber gets hurt or not. Shut up. I might have just gotten a little arrogant, thinking she would be invincible if that was the case. I, I make mistakes sometimes too, you know? This is a tough one. Why would there be any benefit of me pointing out that she makes mistakes a lot, not just sometimes? I would have pointed it out anyway. Clown that bitch. By the time the sun sets, the rain can stop completely. Based on our conversation during breakfast, we're heading to town to look for the other master. But I should check something beforehand. I should check Saber's intentions. What is her purpose in fighting? But I shouldn't ask her straight out. I need to be casual about it. I hype myself up a bit, then push to my feet. The living room seems like a good starting place. I'm going to leverage the peaceful pre-dinner mood to try to get through the saber suburb nature. What if, hypothetically, what do we do if we won the Holy Grail War? <laughs> they about to jump this nigga, bro. So much for casual. I thought about it a lot and couldn't come up with anything smooth, so blunt it is. Huh? 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 <laughs> All three of them offer more or less the same response, though with slightly different expressions. Like I said, after we win, I want to talk about what to do once we obtain the Holy Grail. Yeah, we got that, thanks. Where did this come from? Saber and Iliga don't nod, but they do seem to share an opinion on the subject. I guess it was kind of a weird thing to bring up out of nowhere, but I have to play dumb for now. Yeah, well, I'm just asking. There are only three servants left, so it's not a, it's not such an unrealistic thought. So you know, the end is kind of in sight. Well, you might be right. I guess even Shiro could be thinking about that by now. You did join the war, so I guess it's no surprise you've got your mind on the reward now that you've been risking your life for this. Yeah, I would think that. Uh huh. I'm glad Tosaka likes to focus on the reason for things. Tosaka will allow for the person for the possibility of anything that seems logical, which is really one of her better qualities. This is just something I brought up to discuss, though. So what about you, Tosaka? What would you do if you got the Holy Grail? Not that you're gonna get it. I try to be as natural as possible with this. Let's see. I'm, I've, only, I've really only ever thought about winning. There's nothing I really want to wish for from the Holy Grail. I take the Holy Grail, but I've never really thought about what I'd do with it. So she's fighting because she doesn't want to lose. I figured that was the case, but I didn't know for sure until she said it herself. I figured that too. I don't believe it. You seem like the one person who would have had it all worked out, but you've actually thought about it the least. Say what you want. What about you then, Illigusville? I don't know. I was just told not to give up the Holy Grail to anyone because it's mine. It's mine to begin with, so I obviously don't care. Is that so? So you're saying you enjoy the Holy Grail War more than the Holy Grail? Of course. I only came here to win. I don't care what it gets used for. They both have the exact same... They both have pretty much the same reason. Just different context behind it. They're two peas in a pod. The two stare, they, the two stare at each other in silence. They seem to be coming to a sort of understanding. Sabre doesn't say anything. She probably doesn't intend to join the conversation. No matter how much she resists, I still have to ask. 
I have a good idea of your goals. I try to turn as naturally as possible. What about you, Saber? <laughs> Bro, that's literally what he said. <laughs> Bro, so what about you, Saber? She's been quiet this whole time. Saber doesn't reply. Sensing that something's amiss, Tosaka and Ilya stop and turn towards Saber. The silence stretches out for maybe a minute. I need not remind any of you of this, but it is my duty to obtain the Holy Grail. I know little of the Holy Grail's potential, but so long as it is a Holy Grail, I must obtain it. And if it is possible, I will have my wish granted. There it is. Saber just says she has a wish of her own. I see. So what is your wish? Didn't she already say earlier that she didn't want to talk about it? I try to calm my racing heart and keep composed as I ask. Saber doesn't answer. Fine, that's fine. If she can't answer, chances are good it's because her wish is a selfish one. Knowing Saber, she may hesitate to reveal her wish to anyone if she's wishing for something selfish. And I think I'd rather she keep quiet than make something up. I can feel myself trying to back away from the question I raised. Is it really that complicated? Grandfather said that servants want to come back to life in this world. They want the Holy Grail for a second chance at life. Isn't that the case with you, Saber? Saber jerks her head up. If that's what she wanted, there would be no problem. Which means... No. I have no interest in a second life. My only goal is to obtain the Holy Grail. The price I paid to have a chance at obtaining the Holy Grail was becoming a servant. I figured that much. Someone who took an oath and, and drew the sacred sword wouldn't seek a second life. Hold on. You became a servant just to obtain the Holy Grail? You formed a contract when you became a heroic spirit? Yes. I asked to seek the Holy Grail in exchange for becoming a servant. What? Are you saying you weren't summoned as a servant to help the master get the Holy Grail? But you chose to become a servant so you could get the Holy Grail yourself? Tosaka stares at Saber. She tilts her head confused. So Saber wasn't summoned because she was a heroic spirit, but because she just volunteered to join the war. But as long as she's a servant, she's supposed to be a reputable heroic spirit. That would mean she can't affect the world herself. So Saber must have gone around the rules for servants, which she obviously hasn't. Hold on a minute, I need to organize my thoughts. No, you need do nothing of the sort. You were correct, Ren. I am different than other servants. I have yet to become a complete servant. Not a complete servant? What does that mean? Well, first of all, what does it mean to become a servant? Saber just said she agreed to become a servant as a price she had to pay to obtain the Holy Grail, which means... Hold on a minute. Are servants forced to fight as the price to get what they want? No, that is incorrect. Servants are special familiars that only exist for the Holy Grail War. A servant is created through special summoning magecraft which employs the characteristics of heroic spirits. They are already heroic spirits, so there are no rules which say the servants must work because they are given something. Right. The, system, the servant system uses heroic spirits which are guardian incarnations. It's working with something that already exists, so neither servants nor masters have to pay a price to use the system. But I have heard that before becoming a servant, they have to pay a price to become a heroic spirit in the first place. Heroic spirits are guardians for humans. Even after their deaths, they work to protect humanity and prevent the destruction of the human world. And in order to become a guardian, the person must, while they are still active as a hero in their lifetime, make a deal of some kind. That's the contract to become a heroic spirit, a ritual to give themselves to the world after they die. The beneficiaries of this exchange become heroes, and after they've done what they wanted to do with the hero and eventually died, they repay that debt by becoming heroic spirits. 
Basically, in order to become a hero in life, they go into a sort of debt which they then repay as a heroic spirit after death. Masters like us use servants for Masters like us use servants because we swoop in and make use of that debt her whole experience of trying to repay. So you're saying humans become heroes by making a sort of trade, and in return they get used and summoned as heroic spirit familiars after their death. Which means the deal Saber made to become a heroic spirit was for the Holy Grail. Since Saber obtained the Holy Grail in her lifetime, the only price she has to pay is serving her as a heroic spirit, a sort of guardian even after death. That doesn't sound right. Saber said that her goal was the Holy Grail, but she already obtained it since she became a hero in exchange for the Holy Grail. That is not correct, Shiro. I have not yet obtained the Holy Grail. Altria, King Arthur's wish was to obtain the Holy Grail during their lifetime. I had to obtain the Holy Grail before I died. That is why I agreed to become a guardian after I died, if I could first obtain the Holy Grail. As Rin explained, humans form contracts with the world to become heroes. In exchange, they receive powers beyond human ability, which they pay for by serving after death. But I did not require the world's help to become a hero. Fortunately, King Arthur required no such aid. She didn't need any help to become a hero. So Saber became a hero on her own? Yeah, you are here as a heroic spirit. Does that mean you asked for something else from the world after King Arthur became a hero? Yes. I required the Holy Grail in my final moments. A wish that must be granted presents itself. So I needed the Holy Grail. That is why I formed a heroic spirit contract. I offered to wield my sword as a heroic spirit after my death, so long as I could lay hands upon the Holy Grail. In her last moment, she wished for the Holy Grail's miracle. Now I understand her feelings. The blood-soaked hill, swords standing as gravestones, the bodies of so many knights, a lone king whose reign ended in betrayal. She didn't deserve the end she met. Even if she hadn't had a wish of her own before, she must have thought, I can't die here. This isn't the end I want. And that's why. There's no shame in using the power of the Holy Grail to prolong her life. I see. So you seize the means of obtaining the Holy Grail by selling yourself after death. But Saber, your condition was obtaining the Holy Grail while you were still alive, right? Then... Yes. I cannot complete my search for the Holy Grail while I was alive. I, King Arthur, could not obtain the Holy Grail even at the very end. But that would nullify the contract. For the world to make a servant of me, it must provide a Holy Grail while King Arthur yet lives. And that is why. King Arthur will not die until she obtains the Holy Grail. That is to say, she can't die. That means you're... Yes. Time for King Arthur, for me. Stopped at the moment of my death. I should have died a long time ago, but that does not fulfill the contract. King Arthur was summoned as a servant right at the moment of death, and she will die the moment she obtains the Holy Grail. So it's not that time stopped, you're just stuck in time. It doesn't matter how many times you repeat your fight as a servant, because you obtaining the Holy Grail and fulfilling your contract is predetermined. That is correct. One day I will obtain the Holy Grail, and my contract will be fulfilled. That is why I can be summoned as a heroic spirit in another age. The outcome of my arrangement has already been determined. This does not, this does not apply only to the Holy Grail in this town. Should there be a ch chance of obtaining the Holy Grail, I could be summoned to any battlefield. One day I will obtain the Holy Grail. And my wish will and my wish will be granted. Time stopped for me at the moment of death will resume its flow. King Arthur will meet her in, and in exchange for obtaining the Holy Grail, she will become a heroic spirit. So for you, it's like a dream just before dying. 
one you can't wake from. This Holy Grail War is just part of that dream. And the only way for you to wake is to get a Holy Grail. You believe that cannot enter spirit form because Shiro is inexperienced. But that is incorrect. I cannot enter spirit form because I am still alive. Oh shit. It may be only it may only be a technicality, but I'm considered a living person. Just like during the last Holy Grail War. Saber's tone is apologetic. She probably feels bad for laying the blame. For laying the blame for her not being able to enter spirit form on my ineptitude. I don't care about that, but there's something I need to ask. Saber, what do you mean you're not dead? I get that you won't die until you obtain the Holy Grail. And based on how you described it, you haven't been alive since the time of King Arthur. But then, who are you right now? You're not a clone of the real person or anything, right? That is correct. Heroic spirits when summoned are like copies of the person's original body, but I have yet to reach that state. Until I attain the Holy Grail, I appear as I am at the moment of my death. As Rin mentioned, King Arthur is now stopped in the rip Great River of Time. From where I am stranded, I jump both forward and back along the river's flow. And after I attempt to obtain the Holy Grail, I return to where time stopped for me. I try to diagram it all in my head. It's pretty simple once I visualize it. King Arthur stopped in time at the moment before she dies. But that doesn't mean, that doesn't matter in the wider flow of time. It continues on all the way to the present. She jumps whenever, she jumps to whatever time she's needed, then returns to her own frozen time the moment she, in moment in time after she completes her duty. If she manages to obtain the Holy Grail in one of the times she visits, she'll be swept back to the proper flow of time and die, just as she does in the history we know. Maybe that's how heroic spirits work. When they die, they're transferred back to the sort of nexus where the flow of time stops. And then when they're summoned, they're taken to that point in time, then disappear without ever returning. That's probably what is meant by heroic spirits being doubles. Kind of like a clone made from their original cells. The heroic spirit, which completely retains the abilities and memories they had while alive, appears in this world and gains more knowledge, but it's solved useless. They have no means to return to their original body and instead just disappear. And so, no matter how many times or in how many different eras they're summoned, there will never be any inconsistencies in the heroic spirit's memories. From the moment the person becomes a heroic spirit, they will never change. Even if they a human knowledge, they will just disappear once their role is over. So in that sense, Saber is not a complete servant. After each time she's summoned, she eventually returns to her own time. She goes back to the moment where she's about to die on that blood-soaked hill. Hold it! So then what? If you manage to get the Holy Grail this time, you return to your own time and use the Holy Grail there? That's altering the past. Time traveling or intervening in a parallel world is magic. You can't do something like that. But the Holy Grail makes that possible. My contract dictates that I will become a servant if I can use the Holy Grail. Even if using the Holy Grail causes the person Altria to disappear, that is simply the cost of me becoming a heroic spirit. Saber is so matter of fact about it. It doesn't sound right though. Using the Holy Grail to grant a wish is fine. But why would that mean Altria has to disappear? What the hell? Altria is going to disappear by using the Holy Grail? That's fucked up. Saber, you're not going to... I see the image of the dying girl on that hill alone. You're not going to use the Holy Grail to save yourself? What are you asking, Shiro? My only desire is to save my nation from ruin.
This bitch. Okay. Some people are just a little too kind, you know? Some people are just a little too kind, you know? I can feel my expression tensing up. I thought I knew Saber's wish, but now my head is spinning and I feel like throwing up. Why? And yet, I try to push air from my lungs and get that one word out. There is no reason I should not. I cannot protect my nation. I became a king I became king to protect my nation, but I failed to fulfill that duty. And that is when I thought, perhaps the sword in the stone was wrong to have chosen me. That's ridiculous. Why would she think that? No, that is a doubt I always carried with me. Perhaps I was never fit to be king. Perhaps there was another hero who would have been a better choice. Even in the moment I pulled the sword, there must have been a better king out there, one able to save the nation while I could not. And so I could use the power of the Holy Grail to redo the selection of the king. Then perhaps we could... Is she saying that? Her nation wouldn't be destroyed if she was able to go back to that moment? I feel faint. I'm really angry at Saber for wizard for such a fucking stupid thing. The feeling passes in an instant though. I probably look like a deer in headlights. Isn't it obvious? Saber's wish is not for herself. And on top of that, she wishes for her own elimination. She exists because she became king by drawing the sacred sword. To pretend that never happened means she simply wouldn't exist. Let's say we use the Holy Grail to grant her wish. Ultra would never become king. She would just live in a timeline where she is an ordinary knight. But then what would happen to the Saber I know? Even if it's only temporary, she already exists as a heroic spirit. And if her wish is granted, she will continue on. But as a being meant only for fighting, she's already paid the price for obtaining the Holy Grail. So the Saber I know will continue existing and even if Altria never becomes king, she will be cut off from the past and future. She will always and only ever be the lonely knight dying on that blood-soaked hill. That's idiotic. I won't allow it. There's no hope of salvation there. Even if she was able to do it all over, and there really was a better king, and her nation did manage to last longer, and if she her, her and if she was herself saved, it all be lies. Even if it made everyone around her happy. I can't just let the ten, past 10 years she fought through be a lie. No, you can't do that. Uh-uh. You can't redo things. It wouldn't mean anything if you did, Saber. Don't use the Holy Grail for something like that. You obtain the Holy Grail because you fight for it. You should use that miracle for yourself. What? But I have said, I will be using it for myself. I, Altria, must fulfill her duty as king. How does she not understand? You've already done more than your duty. You've done so much already. You didn't give up even when you were feared. And even when you were betrayed, you held on to your sword until the very end on that hill. So why? Why do you have to keep such promises even after you die? Samba looks bewildered. Ah, shit. Too late to regret what I said. I shouldn't have bl just blurted out that I've been dreaming of Saber's past. A heavy silence hangs between us. I can't think what to say. Even I can tell speaking up would just make things worse right now. But I just can't keep quiet. Saber, I don't like it when people aren't rewarded for their hard work. It's wrong. It's not fair. I get that it's childish. But I want to believe that humans can find happiness if they really work for it. I'm not going to lose to the other masters. I'm claiming the Holy Grail, no question. That's why I want you to make your own wish. That way, I'll actually be able to find some meaning in this stupid ass war. That's the conclusion I reached. I don't I don't know what the Holy Grail is, or nor do I even nor do nor do I know if it's even something you should try to obtain. But if it could save Saber even a little, then I'll go all out for her. The sound of heavy bells ring out and the house suddenly goes dark. The fuck?
Yo! Bro, oh my goodness! All right, it's not assassin. Because the assassin is a samurai. And I, I, I think... I think I think he was against the, the whole sneaking up on people shit. So it's not him. So it has to be either Caster. Who else is left? We have Assassin and Caster. They're still alive. Hold on, let me see. Who else is, who else is left? Lancer, bitch ass! It might be Lancer, actually. I think it's Lancer. The air changes immediately. The light go out. The lights go out, but Saber and Tosaka and I don't say a word. We try to gauge our surroundings with our other senses. The loud ringing stops and the living room goes silent. And yet, a soft rustling sound ripples through the house. Is that alarm? This is that alarm? This house is bounded field. I nod in silence. It's the same sound as when Lancer broke in. Then that could only mean the sounds are getting closer, louder. Something is. Sliding against or across something. It sounds like a swarm of bugs rushing toward the light. Oh, it might be Caster. The only place that doesn't seem to be that doesn't seem to be coming from is the living room. It's not even been a minute since the lights went out, and we're surrounded on all sides by that sound. An enemy. But it doesn't seem like a servant. There's just too many of them. Whatever people might say, I do have some knowledge of mages and magecraft. Even I can sense that there's a lot of magical energy coming from a ton of people or things surrounding the house. 20 at least. But they also seem weirdly light. I don't sense any human will or intellect. The flapping sounds seem to be coming from enemy puppets. Oh, so they did come. They've been running away from me this entire time, but now the berserker's gone, here they are again. What a shrewd servant. Ilya speaks up amid the flapping sounds. She, unlike the three of us, is strangely calm. Do you know who that is, Ilya? Of course I do. I know all the servants. Castor is out there. And she's brought quite an entourage with her. They look like cheap golems made with go dragon teeth. Ilya is so casual about this. And just then the sound stops. I grab the wooden sword in the living room. Saber and Sosaka seem to be waiting for me to make a move. I... Wait, I forgot. I don't need to do that. Let's check the flowchart. Mm -hmm. What should we do here, actually? Damn. It's funny, because I had a... There was a moment like this in Tsukihime. <laughs> And I, I chose what I thought was, was the obvious choice, and I fucking died. <laughs> but this is a similar situation. Okay. I want to say Saber and I will both head out, because I really, they're pushing, they're kind of pushing the theme of, like, um, what it is. They're really pushing the theme of Saber and Shiro fighting side by side and working together. But I also want to say leave Caster to Saber because Saber is, you know, like sh magic doesn't do shit to her, basically. So Caster is just such easy squabbles for her, bro. So it's like, I don't, both of them make sense. But at the same time, I feel like if I stay in here, it'll just like, it'll be like a, a, a thing where I'm trapped or some shit. You know what? Every time you go every time you go out to fight alongside Saber, it always works out. Except for that one time. But um except for that one time with at the castle. But so Saber and I will both head out. It's clear who the enemy is. If Castle's attacking with an entire army, there's only one thing for us to do. Us staying here won't do any good. Saber, come with me. Tosaka, you take Ilya. What? Why? I don't want to babysit Rin. That's my line. And I thought you said you were going to listen to Shiro. He's telling you to stay back, so no arguing. I don't care. I'll be more useful than Saber. 
So Sokka grabs Ilya from behind in a full Nelson and covers her mouth. Ilya, her voice muffled, continues shouting insults and expletives. Expletives? Are you cussing me out? Got it. I'll protect Ilya. I'm counting on you to defeat Caster. Thanks. But try not to overdo it. You're better off running than fighting if it comes to it. Tosaka nods as if she doesn't as if she doesn't have to be reminded. I turn my back to Tosaka and head toward the veranda. Saber. Yes, I know. I will take care of Shiro. Saber follows me after nodding to Tosaka. Ah! Hold on. This beat is hard. In that instant, I doubt my own eyes. A sword swings down at me. I stand, stunned as the blade descends towards my head. <laughs> is this a wrong end already? I twist away and pair it with my wooden sword. Even I don't believe it. My body just reacted the instant I knew I was in mortal peril. The enemy attacks again without missing a beat. A smooth mechanical movement. A fluid, accurate attack. But that's it. It's accurate, but it's not sophisticated. And it lacks the brutality of a killing strike. It seems pathetic next to the strength of saber strikes. Like it's barely moving in comparison to Berserker's incredible speed. Back against the wall, I parry again. As I step back against the wall. Saber strikes like lightning. Damn! Shira, are you alright? See for yourself. I've got a little spooked, but I managed. That will not do. At times like this, you must stand behind me. Please be more careful. I need to be careful of this beat before it burn my house down. Hold on. 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 Been a fight caster. I got Saber, and I'm the master, and I'm finna pull up like a bastard, and I'm finna dip out like a bastard. Hold on, hold on, you a bastard, and I'm finna, finna mm, like a caster, and I'm finna, finna, finna move it faster, and I'm finna, 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 like a bastard. Hold on, <laughs> bro, what? <laughs> I just started mumbling, bro. Started mumbling. This boy is rumbling. Hold on. My stomach rumbling. Hold on. I'm fighting and I'm grumbling. Hold on. You better come in him. Hold on. No, do not come in him. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. That was trash. Why is there an ex why is there an extra um whatever those things are? That would not do. At times like this, you must stand behind me. Please be more careful. Saber scolds me for my carelessness. She's right, but I didn't want to just stay behind her. Shiro, are you listening? I am. So Saber, what was that thing? The hallway is empty. Whatever hideous thing saved me. Saber saved me from was completely annihilated by her attack. It was exactly as Iligusville said. It was a soldier made by using a monster's body as a catalyst. It seems more like a golden than an automata, but it seemed to be of low quality. I would have no trouble defeating them even if we are surrounded. Dang, they just popping up! I don't know where they were hiding. How the hell did they- how did- How bet? I don't know where they were hiding. How the hell did they manage to sneak in? These crudely assembled things scuttle all around us, closing in like spiders. But they're not the only presence I sense. Countless others surround the house. Many times more than I see here. Shiro, next to you. Oh! I leap away from the wall. Whoa! Why you? I strike at the bones with my wooden sword. Let that nigga know! Saber sweeps away the bones, crawling towards my exposed back. The bones move jerkily towards us, attacking with the same unnatural movements. It's not hard to fight them off, but we're destroying more of the house with every strike. And I only have a wooden sword. You better strengthen it. Oh, <laughs> even if I use strengthening on it, it won't last. As much as I hope I'm wrong, it seems like the bones heading for us are endless. I really hope this is going to be an all going going to go on until we both collapse from exhaustion. Dang, where are these things coming from? I can't help but complain as I fight back to back with Saber. There aren't that many bones coming at me. 
Some seem to be coming from inside the house, but most seem to be coming from the yard. Zipper slashing away at the bones coming coming from the yard. It looks like they're heading towards the living room. So Sokka and Ilya are there, and Zipper has her hands full with dealing with the bones heading that way. Saber readies her sword. There may be no need to hide it now. Her golden sword is ready to demonstrate its true power. Wait, Saber, don't use Excalibur right now. I don't I don't care if you destroy the house. Oh, okay, I might care a little. But we're in a resi we're in a residential area. You know what'll happen if you use it here. I shot the saber as I bat away the bone striking at me. I will obey your order, but dealing with so many enemies at once is not ideal. We could find ourselves in terrible trouble. If we do not sweep them all aside in a single blow. I know. They seem to like familiars, right? Then what if we defeat who's controlling them? That should wipe out the entire army. Saber, can you find Caster? There's no need. Caster is in the yard. She is not concealing herself. Which tells me she hopes to lure us to her. Fine, let's give her what she wants. We aren't gonna last like this. I do not mind, but are you saying we're going to attack Caster there? The yard is just ahead. If Caster's out there, she shouldn't be too difficult to reach. But if we do that, we won't be defending the house. Saber's fighting off the fighting the bones off now, but as soon as she's outside, the wall holding them back will be gone. I should. Oh, what should we do? Tosaka can handle it, right? Tosaka's a mage, and I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure Ilya's hiding some power that she's not telling us about, honestly. Tosaka can handle it, man. I'm gonna be real. I think Tosaka can handle it. I'm gonna believe in her. Believe in Tosaka. Ah! I hear glass shattering. Hear the sound of intense fighting coming from the living room. Sure, your orders, please. There is no time to be indecisive. I know. My delaying is making the situation worse. We're going after Caster. I already said Tosaka should take care of Ilya. Then let us go, Master. I will entrust my back to you. Tosaka, I swear, if you die, I will... Shit! Okay! She hurries down the hall, mowing down bones as she goes. The bone soldiers disappears before they before again anywhere near Saber. They are vanishing like snowflakes falling in the snowflake falling on your face. Saber scatters so many in her path, it looks like a snowstorm. She says she trusts her back to me, but she pretty clearly doesn't need me to protect her. I'm once again reminded of how skilled a swordman Saber is. Saber charges through them unwavering. She cuts her way through the source. Straight to the source of these bones. Her only goal now is to defeat the yet unseen sick server that has invaded the house. Saber stops. The soldiers which have been coming at us in droves are suddenly gone. This must be our destination. A distorted human figure looms ahead of us. It wears a robe of some kind, but the robe itself is so dark that it looks more like a hole in the night. This bitch, you killed me last time. A dark shadow. As soon as I lay eyes on the figure, I'm struck by an indescribable sense of anxiety. Are you Saber? Yeah, yes, you certainly would be capable of defeating Berserker. My soldiers then will be no deterrent to you. The figure chuckles. It seems a dark figure is the master of those bone creatures, Caster. But there's no master. There's no sign of a master nearby. Maybe she's the same as Lancer, able to move even far away from a master. You, has your contract been terminated? Saber challenges, challenges her directly with the question. Yes, that man was unfit to be my master, so I rid myself of him. He is no more. I can't see the expression on the robe servant's face, but I can hear the terrible coldness in Caster's voice. Master killer. So your master, he's long dead, but that is not a problem for me, Saber. We are soul eaters. We are surrounded on all sides by sources of magical energy. All that remains is, why, simply obtaining the Holy Grail. 
then there's nothing else to worry about. So you wish to live in this world too? I do not know what heroic spirits you are, but have you abandoned the, what pride you had for this? Goodness. And you would not say letting yourself be used as a tool for humans is casting your pride aside? I could never endure that, both then and now. I grew tired of working for another's benefit. I prefer to be the one pulling the strings. You have no right to criticize. I figured as much, but your misdeeds do not concern me. Saber tilts her body just slightly. He's only about 10 meters from Caster. Saber should be able to close that distance and bring Caster down in a heartbeat. How nasty of you. I came here simply to talk, but will you but you will not hear me. I will have you know I've been I've been gentle here. There is nothing for us to discuss. You will die here. Saber is intent only on killing. I'm not about to oppose her in this case. All I smell from Caster is blood. She must be telling the truth about murdering her master. Her raid tonight was clearly intended to kill everyone in the house. So there's no reason for me to stop Saber. Besides, Caster isn't even a threat to Saber. Even I can see Caster's abilities. She's the weakest when it comes to one-on-one -on -one combat. If Saber engages her, she can only lose. Don't do it, Saber. Even with all that in mind, I can't shake off this sense of anxiety. It's not the same feeling as hopelessness, inevitable death I got when we were in Berserker's presence. Do I just have some sort of aversion to her? Or is it a warning of something dangerous? Forget about me. Somehow, my left hand is aching to warn me that Saber should stay away from that thing. I hesitated too long. Saber launches herself at the dark shadow. Caster smiles. She doesn't seem at all disturbed as Saber rushes toward her. She mutters, Atlas. I can't understand what she says, but it sends something beyond words straight into our minds. The world lurches and distorts. The air grows denser around Saber. I hear, I even feel a tremendous impact. The ground flexes like something's massive slammed into Saber from above. No way, she activated some kind of mage crab without moving a muscle. Actually, I think she murmured something like an incantation. Incantations can be shortened. The simpler the mage crab, the shorter the spells can be made. But this isn't by any means a simple magecraft. Not many mages could visualize such a thing in a single breath. Even if it were possible, they need to prepare a catalyst ahead of time, like Tosaka does. But Caster ignored the magecraft with a murmured word. I've never even heard of something anything like this. If that is Caster's magecraft, she is no mere mage. Saber hovers there frozen, her feet still kicking midair. She hangs, suspended there. The air around her seems to have qu thickened into gelatin. Hold on, I need to go. I can't get close. Some sort of invisible barrier holds me back. The murkiness seems, a con seems confined to Saber. But so long as her feet doesn't touch the ground, she can't move. You underestimated me, Saber. I don't know how your mage is fared in your life, but I lived during the Age of Gods. To these modern mages, what I do must seem like magic. A ridiculing laugh echoes out from the depths of that dark road. Saber is still suspended, helpless in the air. Oh, is this really all you are capable of, Caster? Damn. She dismisses this as if it was a, some dull trick. Magic resistance? It even repels my magecraft? Caster steps back. After casually nullifying Caster's magecraft, Saber surges towards her at lightning speed. But I... Oh shit. Oh shit. Hold on. I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like this. You're in range, Saber! Go for the kill! I shouldn't be so apprehensive. Alright, this is the wrong game. It's the wrong game. Just because he said that dumb shit, it's the wrong game. 
We have Caster cornered. If we retreat, we're only giving Caster a chance to win. Yeah, this is a wrong game. All right. Saber's sword flashes in a blur of moment, movement. She closed the distance and will likely cleave Caster in half with her next strike. It's a wrong end. But Saber suddenly stops. It's nothing Caster has done. Saber's own instinct seems to be stopping her from getting closer. You. That is. Saber twists away to dodge. Too late. She falters as if something is. Lifted, then a strange dagger plunges into her chest. Caster, you just... Yes, this is my noble phantasm saber. It's a terribly weak weapon. It cannot create anything and it certainly cannot kill a servant or even a human. However, it is imbued with an indulgence from the age of gods, permitting it to and forgiving it for doing one very specific thing. Shiro, please run. Saber isn't injured, but she collapses to her knees anyway. Before I can figure out what's going on. The final command spell disappears from my left hand. Just how I planned it, boy. Now if I could just collect the, that, the mage and that vessel inside, my victory will be assured. Caster raises her hand. Even without her chanting, the air wavers and blows me off my feet. I can't get up. My legs are an absolute mess from that blow. I simply won't move. It's about time. Now stand, Saber. Even if the gods punish you, I will forgive you. She snickers. Saber stands up. She walks in the same jerky manner as the bone soldiers, slowly approaching me as I lay immobile. Her eyes bulge like she's having a nightmare as she swings her sword down. <laughs> Wonderful, Saber. Now you and I will both now you and I will both bear the guilt of killing our own masters. Yes, united in our crimes, we shall curse this earth till its death. <sighs> her laughter assaults my eardrums. Without even understanding what's going on, I feel my body go rigid. Crimson stains the night. Saber stares down at my blood-soaked body, her eyes filled with tears. Got a wrong game. All right, this some bullshit. Some bullshit. <laughs> some bullshit. I'll check it out at the end of the episode. I'm good. I don't. I'm a fucking hell. I mean, fuck. Damn. Fuck this game. You no saber. Saber raises her sword. She's already closed in on Caster. No, don't saber. I desperately sprint towards Saber, my heart racing. Saber suddenly halts. It's not clear whether Caster did anything. Saber tenses up after sensing something from Caster. You, that is. Saber twists away to dodge. However, bony arms burst forth from the ground and grab her legs. I wasn't expecting you to have such foresight, but this ends here, Saber. A sharp blade emerges from the folds of Caster's robe. It's an oddly shaped dagger. Thin and brittle, that blade isn't meant for killing. Saber regards it in disgust, and Caster strikes, clearly seeing her opportunity for victory. Being grabbed from the ground must have surprised Saber, as Saber is unable to dodge or deflect the falling dagger and simply takes the blow, looking astonished. I hear Caster's voice from behind me somewhere. I can't see her expression. The only thing I can do is place myself in front of Saber and take the blow in her place. It wasn't graceful. I didn't have the confidence to just step in and take the dagger to the chest. So instead, I tried to shield Saber by hugging her to obscure Caster's target. And so Caster's dagger plunges into my back, tearing through my spine in, the moment of, in a moment of unbelievable pain. 
Saber, kill the bitch, now! I stopped myself from crying in pain and mustered my strength to support Saber. I can't hear what she's saying, even as close as she is to my ear. Get back, Saber! Get behind me! Saber understands before I gather my voice to tell her to jump. I go flying. Saber shakes off the bony arms gripping her legs and carries me with her. Shiro, your wound! Saber's voice is urgent. She lays me gently on the ground, but the pain only grows worse. It feels like scissors tore open my back and someone poured lead down my spine. The pain is unreal. Shira, stay calm, Shira! But I'm not exactly losing my mind over it. Hearing Saber practically shouting makes, actually makes me calmer. Dummy, you don't have to shout. I can hear you. This is nothing. It just hurts. Forget about me. Take care of Caster. I'll point at Caster's direction. My head's still down. Yes, I will settle things right away. Please, hold on a little longer. Saber turns towards Caster. So that was your noble phantasm, was it not, Caster? Saber's voice is harsh and angry. The black shadow clicks her tongue in irritation and raises the strange dagger in her hand. Yes, as you can see, it is unfit for killing anyone. But as you have sensed, it is my magical trump card with limitless power for a single purpose. If you do not wish it to touch you, I advise you against coming near me, Saber. Caster's talking bold, but she doesn't seem as composed as earlier. Even a powerful mage like Caster can't hurt Saber as long as she's only using magecraft. Whatever her noble phantasm might be, it can't hurt Saber. Even if she surprises her with it. You should beat... Beat her no problem. I give my orders through gritted teeth. Oh, are you sure, Saber? You could certainly corner me, but who will protect him while you do? Shall I remind you that my magecraft is only ineffective against you? Can you imagine what I might do with my back against the wall and you not there to protect the boy? Why you? Saber's voice rumbles up from deep in her chest. The rattling of bones grow louder. I'm kneeling on the ground and Saber holds her sword, defending me as the bones surround us. Damn it! I messed up. Even if I manage to save Saber, there's no point in me being left so weak. I can't move properly, and I'm just slowing Saber down. Castle will be no threat to Saber alone, but with me to worry about. You said you came to talk, Caster. What? Saber! Please, shut the fuck up, Master. This is the best choice right now. Saber lowers her sword. I think I hear Caster laugh amid the sound of the rattling bones all around us. Let us hear what you have to say, Caster. Depending on what conditions you offer, we might let you go. Are you quite mad? Do you not understand your lives are in my hands? Get too bold and I might just crush you. Do not misunderstand your position. You hold my master's life in your hands, not mine. Should you snuff out that life, I will not hesitate to fucking murder you. I will use every ounce of power in my sword to burn you to cinders, even if I disappear as I do so. The air around us goes cold. Saber's words intimidate Caster, I can feel it. Fine, I will not touch the boy. You are my target in any case. I suppose it wouldn't hurt to let just one master off. What? I was your target the entire time? Indeed. I cannot simply ignore the heroic spear who defeated Berserker. You and I, along with Lance, are the only servants who remain. With you as an ally, Lancer would be no threat at all. Only three remain. Does that mean Assassin was defeated? Who knows? But he is gone now. So that must mean he was defeated. A servant who can't even protect his own lord doesn't deserve more than that. Assassin was defeated. Does that mean the remaster on Ryudo Temple is gone? I didn't fight them or even know who they were. But now there's one less master. The only remaining servants are Caster, Saber, Lancer, and, and Lancer, who hasn't shown up since the first night. 
This conversation is over. What I want is your noble phantasm. If you do not want your master to die, then kindly give me your sword. There will be no point in doing so. Only I can wield this sword. If you are a heroic spirit, you should know very well that a noble phantasm can only be used by its owner. Oh, yes. I suppose I would just have to take you as well then, Saber. No matter how skilled the knight, they can be persuaded once captured. And you are my type, too. I look so forward to teaching you manners. Her voice drips with amusement. I feel myself on the verge of passing out, even if my anger boils over. I try to shove the pain aside and start to force myself to stand on numb legs. You piece of... I'm not going to let Saber get captured because of me. I decide I'm going to protect Saber. So I'm not going to let a wound like this bring me down. I grab my wooden sword and start slashing at the bones surrounding us. No, Shiro. Saber's voice is brittle, tense. Oh, if you want to kill yourself, I won't stop you. Caster mocks me as I struggle. Bones crack and rattle. And as if to muffle all those sounds. The bones are. What the fuck just happened? The bones are swept aside in the blink of an eye by a sudden volley of arrows. What? We all stand dumbfounded. The arrows that rain down on us appear as they have they have been an illusion, but they weren't. The entire horde of bones is gone. <laughs> Who's there? Castor looks up. Saber must have noticed earlier. Well, before Castor, she stares up toward the wall in disbelief. This bitch ass. I fucking hate this nigga, bro. I don't remember why I hate this nigga, but I remember that I hate this nigga, bro. I don't understand what I'm seeing. There's a golden figure standing with the moon behind them. It's a man clad in golden armor, looking down at the yard with a cruel smile. Castor raises her voice, instinctively realizing that this is the one who annihilated her troops. He gives no answer. He's not even looking at Castor. His eyes are fixed on one person alone, Saber. Answer! I'm asking who you are! Castor's voice is heavy with emotion. The golden armored man finally looks at her. Castor gasps as the man's red eyes bore into her. His gaze is impossibly cold. He doesn't even see Castor as human. I can tell as far away as I am. I don't blame Castor for being intimidated. Like some icy hand on the... Like some icy hand has a grip on her heart, since she looks straight into his eyes. Why? Why are you getting in my way? Castor's voice trembles as she speaks. She must know she's doomed if she doesn't do something, but... I have no reason to address myself to a mongrel. Be gone, clown! His voice comes as a death sentence. I hear a loud snap. By the time I realize it's a sign of him clicking his fingers, the tragedy has begun. Myriad weapons appear in the air, shooting toward Caster like bullets from a machine gun. Caster raises her arm. A conceptual weapon envelops her. It forms a glassy film in front of Caster. It is likely every bit as durable as Berserker himself. But her efforts are probably fruitless, as the barrier is merely glass. Her crystalline barrier shatters under the deadly rain of so many weapons. She sounds utterly dumbfounded, with not a modicum of concern for Caster, as she so pitifully tilts her head in wonder. The weapons tear through her dark robe. They are merciless. Spears tear into her, sending fabric flying, only for yet more of them to plunge into her body. Swords cut down her falling form while arrows sail towards an arm as it is about to hit the ground. An axe chops off the head about to complain of the pain. All of it brings Cassie to untold peaks of agony. She can't possibly survive. 
Cass has succumbed to the endless hail of so many different weapons, it's no longer even recognizably human. The wind flows, her tattered empty robe floats away, the shredded pieces of it fly skyward in the evening breeze. That torn robe tries valiantly to hold its form. Maybe because that's the only thing remaining to remind us of Castor. I'm completely speechless. My frozen mind is fixed on the miserable remnants of that robe as they float away. And then... Insolent fool. I told her to be gone from my sight. The sensible thing to do would have been to graciously commit suicide before me. The man in gold grunts contempt contemptuously. Uh, I'm not hallucinating. The dark robe twists like the coils of a snake and sprouts wings to fly away. But it's too late. I don't know what the man did. I only see a crack in the night sky itself. Like a wave breaking out at sea, the fault line engulfs the fluttering robe. It's like a person being run over by a steamroller. The robe falls. Caster is beneath it unscathed. And then... A storm of magical swords rains down upon her. Her scream splits the night. More swords fall upon her in response and her scream grows louder. Pull them out! It hurts! Pull them out, please! Caster must be able to heal himself like Saber. Even all those swords impaling her is still not enough to kill her, but it's hard to watch. The torn of swords do not stop. Each weapon is different, the two are alike, no two are alike. And as much as I don't want to admit it, each of the weapons is a magical sword or spear, and is easily a match for a servant's noble phantasm. No way, that isn't possible, there can't be so many! An inexhaustible supply of noble phantasms rains down on the caster. Seeing the way she struggles under it is just... Am I going to die? Am I going to die for something so ridiculous? How funny! This must be some joke! And that is the end of Caster. She disappears along with the black mist that was hiding her. The infinite cycle of torture that's in the drag on forever lasted, in actuality about 10 seconds. During that time, Saber stood, scowling at the Golden Knight. <laughs> a mere maze even mentioning capture what belongs to the King of Knights is a great sin. I am king and she is mine. Any fool who meddles with the king's treasure is fit for nothing but a such a but such a but such a death. Now then, it's been a while, Saber. Do you remember the decision I made? His tone turns amicable as he addresses Saber. But Saber doesn't answer. She only glares at him all, all she only glares all the more intensely at him. Why do you look at me like that? Have you not made your choice yet? It's been ten years. That should have been enough time to decide. Uh, I suppose it has only been 10 years for me. To you, it must seem like yesterday. Guys, I can't, I can't fight this anymore. I'm gonna, I'm gonna end my YouTube channel and dedicate my life to playing Zenless Zone Zero. I haven't touched the game yet, but there's a lot of bad bitches in it. And I feel like that's more important than whatever the fuck y'all want. So I'm gonna be doing that. <laughs> uh, wh wh where was I again? <laughs> What well, a foolish woman you are, making me wait so long. He laughs heartily, my heart's pounding. Partly from the disaster I just witnessed. But beyond that, the way he's looking at Saber is making me nauseous. Man, don't be talking to my bitch like that! Ah, some mongrels yet remain. He glances toward the house annoyed. Huh? I look and see Tosaki and Iliga on the veranda in front of the living room. What is that? Iliga looks up at the man like she should have seen a ghost. 
She strains her eyes for a moment and shakes her head in disbelief. No way. Who are you? Can't you tell, fool? I am one of the heroic spirits you know so well. You can't be! Ilya jumps off the veranda and glares at the man as a challenge as, as if in challenge. I don't know. I don't know you! There shouldn't be a servant I don't know about! What wait, Ilya! My words don't reach her. Ilya releases a mass of magical energy straight at the man. I hear it rushing through the air. He does nothing. A mirrored shield appears in front of him and reflects Ilya's attack back at her. She'd been so blind and desperate in her attack that now she has no time to react to it. Ilya can only stand there as her attack rebounds towards her. That hurt! Tosaka steps in to save her, blocking the attack. I see. So we have an odd one this time around. I see they've done a bit creative thinking to avoid repeating their mistake last time. He looks down at Ilya, scrutinizing her. He looks at Ilya the same way he looks at Saber, coldly, as though appraising prized possession. No, 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 I hate you! Ilya glares at the man while Tosaka tries to hold her back. I could not possibly care less. Come now, open yourself up. Quickly now, you were the fifth one after all. He says it so simply. I'm not sure why that had any effect on her. No. Ilya trembles violently and slumps to the ground. That's it. Nothing else can happen. Tosaka and I can only look up at the man. We completely understand. He's not looking at us. If either of us so much as speak, we'll meet the same fate as Castor. But not Saber. Her silence as she stares up at the Golden Knight is entirely different than ours. How and why have you manifested, Archer? Saber tries to keep her voice under control. Tosaka and I can only gasp in surprise. I require no reason. The Holy Grail is mine. What reason could I need to collect what is mine? Nonsense. You are not that kind of hero. Or rather, stop. Another word and you'll be forced to fight, King of Knights. I intended to do so, but I've lost interest. This place is too unsightly. It is not fit to celebrate our reunion. And with that, the man in gold turns away. He turns his back to us as if to demonstrate that we are no threat. We shall meet again, Saber. My decision remains unchanged since our last meeting. Be prepared to make your choice by the next time we meet. He disappears. The tension fades and the yard returns to the usual tranquility. But it's the only but it's the only thing that returns to how it was. The Emiya house is in shambles and Ilya has fainted. And Saber, still with her back to us, remains silent. What was his name? Now there's two archers. Chaotic good! Chaotic good! I remember this nigga, bro, from fucking Fate Zero. Bitch ass. I fucking hated this nigga. I don't remember why. I think it was his attitude. I really hated... I really hated his attitude, bro. That used to piss me off. I hated seeing him. I set a futon out in the living room and lit the unconscious Ilya on it. She may have fainted, but her face is peaceful at least. Hey, don't look away. The bandits will slide off. I feel a hand slap my back. Ah, shit! Tosaka, is that any way to treat the injured? Shut up! I'm treating your wounds, so hold still. Come on, raise your hand. I doubt you need it, but let me put some ointment on it. Ah, that's cold! You can feel it, you're fine. Come on, let me wrap it up. She wraps the bandage around my right shoulder with surprising skill. It's past 10. After our battle with Caster, Dosaka began treating my wounds as soon as we got back to the living room. Well, she started, but most of my wounds had already healed, so now she's just fussing over me. And we're done. Your body is nuts. Only vampires heal like you do. 
Are you sure you're human? I think she said something similar before. Hey, I'm just an ordinary human being. Even I don't know what's going on in my body, so don't bother asking. Don't mess with me. Who in the world could possibly be walking normal after getting their spinal cord severed? Look, it's useful, so I won't question it too much. But it's also getting creepy. Don't tell me you can't die unless your head is chopped off. The scary thing here is that Tosaka is serious. One of these days, she might actually try for my neck with an axe. You think so too, right, Saber? I think you're the cause, but still, he's damn near immortal. Huh? Are you saying Shiro's healing power is not his own? Of course not! Do you think someone who only knows strengthening Magecraft could do something like that? This ridiculousness can only be a result of his connection with you. Your own healing power must be flowing into him. Do you think so? I never felt that kind of connection with him before. If you are correct, my magical energy should be flowing into Shiro as we speak. More importantly, my healing power is not as strong as Shiro. Saber, what's wrong? You just went pale. Saber stares off into space, apparently not even hearing Tosaka. No, it can't be. Saber shakes her head and looks down. Uh huh. Tosaka and I exchange looks. Saber's acting weird. Actually, I know why. Ever since that golden knight appeared, Saber's been pretty down. Well, let's put Shiro's issue on hold for now. Saber, did you know that gold guy we met earlier? Goldie said something about you being his or something. Saber doesn't answer. She obviously doesn't want to talk about it. But I still want to know. So Saga's asking the questions I want answers to. Saber, if you know, then tell us. Who was that guy? You called him Archer. Yes, I hate to admit it, but I know that man. It should be impossible, though. There should only be seven servants, so it shouldn't be possible for him to be been summoned as well. A servant? So he really is a servant? That's pretty obvious. That could be a real problem for us. His class is Archer. He is, of course, a completely different heroic spirit than the Archer who formed a contract with Rin. His abilities and temperament are different as well. I can tell. I only saw him briefly, but it was more than enough to get a sense of what a monster he was. Hold on a minute, that doesn't make sense. If he's Archer and a servant, that makes eight. But only seven servants can be summoned at a time. One disappearing doesn't mean another pops up to take their place. Besides, even the Holy Grail doesn't have the magical energy to summon more than seven. There are only seven servants because that's how many can be summoned at once. So how can they summon an eighth? Wait. Saber, did you meet him in the previous war? Yes, Ren. On the final day of the Holy Grail War, I fought him in the Sea of Fire. For a moment, my entire body tenses. Saber fought in a sea of fire. This is nothing new. I already heard from, from Kodamine that the fire was caused by the Holy Grail War, so it shouldn't be a surprise. I've been trying not to think about it all this time. So what happened? Did you manage to beat him? I did not defeat him. That is, I could not defeat him because I... You were beaten instead. Unlike your messed up summoning to Shiro, you couldn't beat this guy even when you were summoned properly. Saber hangs her head but doesn't answer. And that's answer enough. Saber couldn't win? Not this imperfect Saber hobbled by my weakness, but Saber with nothing holding her back. Is that even possible? You consider her expressively in terms of her strength as a swordsman. Saber isn't invincible. She was weaker than Berserker, but Saber has her Noble Phantasm. The other Serpent's Noble Phantasms are powerful, but Saber succeeds them all. 
It's hard to believe there could be a hero in this world that a sacred sword can't defeat. Then there's only one explanation. He wasn't summoned from this war. He must be a servant who remained from the previous war. Nothing else makes sense. My mind stops working. Not that I agree with Tosaka's assessment, but she just described what I've been hoping could be possible since yesterday. But that is... There are no buts. It's the, it's the only possible explanation. Only seven servants can be summoned for each Holy Grail war. If there are any other servants here, wouldn't that mean they're the winners who survived the previous war? Okay, that makes sense. Because I remember there was some weird blind nigga talking to Sakura earlier in this earlier. I think it was during the prologue with um Tosaka. I think it was. There was some ugly ass blind guy talking to her asking for directions and shit. So like and you know, I recognized him at the time. I don't think I said anything, but I recognized him. And that that's quite literally this nigga here. You feel me? And um he said that he waited 10 years, so it's very possible that he was just in the real world for 10 years, waiting to find Saber. There's a heavy silence, but does that mean if he dies this time, is he just gone forever? Fucking W, I never want to see this nigga again. There's a heavy silence. Yet, yeah. why does Tosaka look so pleased? Tosaka, why do you look so happy? Isn't it obvious? There's president. I don't know who that guy is, but he's the servant who won the last Holy Grail war, right? Then he must have obtained the Holy Grail, and he's staying in this world with his power. That means he's proved that as long as you obtain the Holy Grail, a servant can remain in this world. I'd like to capture him and question him for more information. Yeah, you're absolutely right, Sosaka. I don't know who the heck this guy is, but he's a servant, and he's remained in the world since the previous war. Which means there's a way for Saber to do the same. Well, I don't know who he is or what his motives are, but it doesn't change the fact that he's an enemy we need to defeat. Saber, so what's his true identity? I do not know. Even during the previous war, I cannot determine his identity. He did not have the noble fan he did not have a noble phantasm specific to him. He didn't have a noble phantasm that made it clear who he was. That's ridiculous. A servant who doesn't have a noble phantasm wouldn't be a servant, right? Besides, he just That's right, he had plenty of them. It shouldn't be too hard to figure out his identity since he used so many. We should need to figure out which hero would match the shapes and size of the noble phantasms he used. Then I shall ask you this. Do you remember any of the noble phantasms he used? Of course I do. Um... Tosaka thinks hard for a moment. She folds her arm over her chest, frowning. And then just tilts her head in confusion. No way. That's impossible. What's going on, Tosaka? What's impossible? I don't believe it. The one covered in blood was Dang's life. And that sickle looking thing was Harpy. There was one that looked Chinese too. And I think there was one that looked like it was used by Akala. So Sokka looks almost crazy as she mutters to herself. She looks a bit like she's tumbling down a rabbit hole. So that one was similar to Saber Sword, but it should be different. The symbol design looked like it must have come from Northern Europe. And I heard the most originals of Magic Swords tend to take their cues from Nordic sources. She's even starting to grind her teeth. Hey, Tosaka! Living her to her own devices will do more harm than good. If I don't stop her right now, we'll wind up paying the price later. Especially me. Tosaka! Tosaka! Come back to us! Uh, shut your bitch ass up! You butt in, it's just confusing me! Uh, I'm not trying to butt in. You're talking about that guy's noble phantasm, right? Judging from their shapes, there was Dines Leaf Harpy, Durandal, Vajra, Gug, Khaled, Bulg, and oh, Gay Bulg. 
I don't know the Chinese one, but I think I've covered all the famous ones. Yeah, you're right on all accounts. I don't love the face she's making. It makes me feel even worse. I don't know much, but I just blurted out what leaped into my head. But what does that mean? There's no hero who has such an insane amount of noble phantasms. And more importantly, the weapons are from all over the place, so I have no idea what the hell's going on. Yes, that is why even I could not discern his identity. He employed a wide variety of noble phantasms, each of which should have been a sign of a specific hero. Archer had so many I could not narrow it down his identity. The two looked perplexed. Well, with so many noble phantasms, we have no hope of determining who he is. It's like hiding a leaf in a forest. Shiro, don't you have any suggestions? Tosaka, obviously annoyed, glares at me expecting, I don't know what. She's just taking her frustration out on me, I guess. Like what? Like anything you notice or deduce, any flash of inspiration. We need some real outside of the box thinking here. Our only chance at solving this predicament is through sheer luck. She may be right. Ha! I get it! You're making fun of me! Rude. I just think you're no help in the first place. So, what do you think? I've got nothing. I raise my hands up and surrender. Tosaka groans. That leaves up with only one conclusion, Saber. Do you think all his noble phantasms are fakes? There's no other explanation. I agree, however. They weren't... They weren't fakes. How did I figure that out? Besides, fake noble phantasms wouldn't have charmed Caster. Wouldn't have harmed Caster. How do you figure, Emiya? I mean, I'm just saying they were real. Actually, everything else seemed fake. It's intuition? I can't explain it, but those were all real. Lance's gay bulk is real, of course, but the spirit the other guy used is also the real gay bulk. What? Her making that face isn't making explana explaining this any, any easier. It doesn't help that I have no idea how I know this. I just know all his noble phantasms are real. I can feel it. Maybe it's because I used projection during our battle against Berserker. After seeing all those noble phantasms, I can tell they're all real. A great weapon is imbued with specific concepts, while limitations lack something. I learned that much when I replicated Saber's sword. In that regard, I think all the noble phantasms that Servant had were perfect. Let's just set that bullshit aside. Cause we don't know that guy's true identity, we should think of our next moves. Osaka sneaks a glance at Saber. Assuming he's after the Holy Grail, there's one more thing bothering me. Saber, can I be blunt? Why does she always have that mischievous look when it comes to topics like this? What do you mean, Ren? There's something you would like to know, you need not hold back. Are you sure? Okay then. What do you think of him, Saber? From the way he was talking about you, he seems to have the hots for you. I'm not following Tosaka's lead, but I also sneak a glance towards Saber. I don't think Tosaka has it wrong. He seems obsessed with Saber. Actually, it's beyond being obsessed. From the very beginning, he only saw Saber as his possession. I do not care what he thinks. I do, however, recall him proposing marriage in the previous war. Of course, I banished that idea with my sword. Propose? You mean that kind of proposal? Whoa! What the heck is that servant thinking? Whoa, I don't know if I should celebrate that, but I get the sense you don't feel too bad about it either. It's flattering for a woman being proposed to, even after you've become a servant. That is not true. And I do not have that kind of freedom. My only goal is to obtain the Holy Grail. Honestly, that kind of that kind of nonsense. Honestly, that kind of nonsense irritates me. Really, you might feel that way, but he seems really into you. Guys like that, they don't get discouraged even when you reject them. You're stubborn too, so maybe you two are a good match. 
So Sokka's being irresponsible, so I'm not sure why she looks so amused. So Sokka looks like she's happy to have a conversation like this with Saber, even though Saber seemed disinterested. I keep telling you I have no interest in such things. He is certainly a skilled heroic spirit, but he and I are of vastly different minds. Saber's responses are at least sincere. Oh, did you hear that, Saber? I mean, Shiro? Saber has no interest in men. Relieved? Rin, Shiro has nothing to do with this conversation. There is no logic in what you've just said. I figure, my bad. But if you're not sure why I'm so amused, I have to say this whole thing is just funny. Tosaka laughs menacingly. Her eyes make it clear she's laughing at me as much as at Saber. I don't know what's pissing me off, but I get up without a word. Huh? Hey, where you going, Shiro? T, I'm getting thirsty and I figured I'd prepare tea for everyone. I huff and head towards the kitchen. I don't know why, but I'm just irritated. So I decided to make a super bitter tea for Tosaka. Type shit. Then I'm going back to my room for now. Let's talk more tomorrow when Ilya wakes up. After teasing Saber for a good while, Tosaka gulps down her bitter tea and gets up. Yeah, go to sleep. Don't come back here. Fine, fine. I'm leaving the rest of you here. I don't know why she's amused, but Tosaka's mood seems good even after she turns back to the outbuilding. What will you be doing, Shiro? Your wounds may have healed, but you shouldn't push yourself. You should also rest for the night. Yeah, I intend to. But I'm going to watch Ilya a little more. If she seems alright, I'll take her to the spare room and then I'll go to, go to bed too. I see. Then I will stay as well. And that's where our conversation ends. So Sokka was the one making all the noise, so it's gotten awkward now that it's quiet. Well, it's not that awkward. I'm anxious because there's so many questions rattling around in my head and so many things I want to say. Come to think of it, I haven't really been able to talk to Saber. About the Holy Grail. About her not being dead. About how even if she obtains the Holy Grail, there's no salvation for her. There's no need to explain why. She still doesn't have a wish for herself. Saber, about our conversation earlier. Our eyeballs meet. Hers tells me that she knows what, I'm, what I want to say. Yes. What is it, Shiro? She tries to divert what I have to say with her quiet tone. But I have to talk to her. I said about our conversation earlier. So Sokka says servants can stay in this world if they obtain the Holy Grail, so... No, I have no intention of remaining here. The moment I obtain the Holy Grail, I will return to my original timeline. My original time. So you're going to redo the selection of the king, rather than saving yourself from the brink of death. You want to start over from the very beginning. Yes. It is a king's duty to protect their nation. I was inadequate, so I must at least select an appropriate king in my steed. She says it like she's talking about a stranger. For some reason, I get real mad. You, you idiot! Wake up! To hell with the king's duty! What matters is that you're here, so you should do what you want to do. You're strong, right? Then finish off this war right now, get your holy grail, and quit being a servant. If you have a wish, don't use it to go back in time and redo everything. If you want change, don't change your past self, but find a way to change now. Then return to the past from here. Sebri doesn't answer. That's some real shit, though. Sebri doesn't answer. She sighs. You are very persistent, Shiro. Please, let this matter rest. She rejects what I said outright. Obtaining the Holy Grail does not mean I can remain in this age. Archer. That servant does not remain in this age because he obtained the Holy Grail. It was not possible to obtain the Holy Grail in the previous war. Huh? What do you mean? One cannot obtain what does not exist. On that night when the town was ablaze, the Holy Grail was destroyed. 
destroyed by my master who betrayed me, Kiritsugu Imiya. What? I mean, I already knew that. What? The edges of my vision go dark. I nearly fall backward, but catch myself with both hands. Emiya. Kiritsugu Emiya. Hi. Yes. Ten years ago, he was my master in the previous Holy Grail War. Kiritsugu and I survived until the very end, and the Holy Grail was in Kiritsugu's hands. Archer and his master were still left, and we had only ha and we had only to defeat him to bring an end to the Holy Grail War. But Kiritsugu abandoned the Holy Grail, and as a result, the town was consumed in flames. He ordered me to destroy the Holy Grail, as servants are the only ones capable of touching it. Kiritsugu used his final command spell to force me to destroy the Holy Grail. With the Holy Grail gone, servants could not remain in this world. Kiritsugu did not try to keep me here. That is my last memory. I cannot conclude my battle with that Golden Knight Archer, nor ask Kiritsugu why he betrayed me. It's not like I never thought about it. My old man was a mage. He lived in this town. He could have been involved in the Holy Grail War. But still... Why didn't you tell me, Saber? Why didn't you tell me my old man was a master? A servant typically does not retain their memories from previous summonings. And the same heroic spirit is not typically summoned as a servant consecutively. I am an exception to this rule. That is why I determined it would be best not to mention that to you. And I was not eager to speak with you about what sort of master what sort of master Kiritsugu was. Why didn't you want to tell me? Shiro. In the same way you have witnessed my past in my dreams, I have seen your past as well. I was surprised by your past and cannot believe how much Kiritsugu had changed. The Kiritsugu in me of your memories was a wonderful person, but he is nothing like the man I remember. In brief, he was a typical mage. He acted purely out of self-interest, and he destroyed anything in his way. I saw not a hint of human emotion from him. In the course of the entire war, he spoke to me only three times. I, did not, I, did, I do not think I need to explain those three occasions to you. He was not brutal or some gleeful murderer. He was holy without emotion. Kiritsugu treated me as nothing more than a tool and saw himself in much the same way. Kiritsugu killed every single one of his own emotions just as he killed his own enemy, each of his enemies. I never learned what drove him or what he believed in. But in the moment I stood before the Holy Grail, he commanded me to destroy it. To be honest, never have I more bitterly cursed the command spells or a betrayer than in that moment. There's truth in Saber's words. No, they must all be true. I realized I knew nothing about what Kirisuga was like before I met him. There was no way for me to find out what kind of person he'd been before that, and there was no need. Even if Kirisugu Emiya was cold-hearted, it wouldn't change a thing. The man who adopted Shiro Emiya as his son was much warmer. That was the only truth about him to me. But what nags at me is, if Kirisugu was so ruthless, then his final move mo moments were, were just too empty and futile. I see. And maybe I was able to summon you because I'm Kiritsugu's son. I do not know. Kiritsugu summoned me after taking the proper steps. He had the aptitude to be a master, and so was hired by a mage family with a long history to join the Holy Grail War. I hear that house provided everything he needed to be a master. They excavated the relic of King Arthur from Cornwall and gave it to Kiritsugu to use for the Holy Grail War. Kiritsugu used it as a catalyst to summon me, King Arthur. And so Kiritsugu did not possess a connection to me, nor did he possess any attributes in common with me. There must be some other factor which enabled you to summon me. I got it. I'm not that surprised my old man was a master. What surprises me is that his servant is the same King Arthur with me now. And one more thing. 
Saber said the Holy Grail was destroyed. Then maybe this war is meaningless to begin with. I don't get it. You already know there's no Holy Grail, right? So why did you decide to join this ridiculous war? I cannot say for certain whether the Holy Grail is truly here or not. But so long as I have been summoned, there must be a Holy Grail. Have you forgotten, Shiro? I have become a servant expressively to ex obtain the Holy Grail. Put another way, I would not be summoned to a place if there was no Holy Grail. Oh yeah, but... Then does that mean a Holy Grail can fix itself as if it's destroyed? No. The Holy Grail is not something that can be easily replaced. A Holy Grail once destroyed cannot be restored. But then... But it should exist. Servants are drawn to the Holy Grail and manifest. Without a Holy Grail, servants will not appear. The priest mentioned that already. The priest. Oh yeah, that guy. The guy living in the church, the overseer of the Holy Grail war. The man who's managing the Holy Grail should be able to answer all my questions. The end of the previous war. The whereabouts of the destroyed Holy Grail. And how that archer is still around. And yeah. What did Kiritsuko see at the end of the battle that made him want to destroy the Holy Grail? Yeah. Because I did finish Fate Zero, like, years ago. I don't remember why he did that shit. I just remember that he did. But I do remember, like, what his goals... and I, I, I do remember what he was going to wish for. I remember why he was looking for the Holy Grail. I do remember that. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to say shit, you know. If you haven't seen Phase Zero, I really recommend you watch that shit. It's fucking amazing. But I remember all of that. I wake up alone. Even if she's recovered, Saber still needs to sleep on occasion. The moment we return to our room, Saber immediately falls asleep. I went to bed as well, if only to make her feel better. That was about an hour ago. It's past midnight. I should not I should be able to get out of the house without Saber or Sokka noticing at this hour. Wait for me to grab my fucking drink before you start. Okay. I made it. I sneak outside, trying not to make a sound. The th I thought of using my bike, but I didn't want to risk. I didn't want to run the risk of waking them up. So I walk. There's not a single person outside. It's late, but the silence is still eerie. The air is frozen. There doesn't seem to be any sign of life in these buildings. On the other hand, it feels like something dark and sinister is swirling at my feet. Did something happened to the town while Ilya had me prisoner? It's like a bad omen hangs over the entire place. This isn't my imagination. I look up towards the mountain in the distance. Ryudo Temple, which stands a distance away from town, only looks like a black lump from here. But that... It looks like it's swaying in the night air, rumbling and throbbing. I cross the river and walk into Shinto. Huh. So it's been 10 days. On that day, the night I met Saber for the first time, and then we walked across this bridge with Tosaka seems so long ago. I see the church. I've never been here before. I may have said as much to Tosaka, but I did have a connection with that church. If things had gone differently, I would have ended up under the care of that church and then been adopted by some family later on. It would have either been the Emiya family or that church. One hell of a fork in the road. 10 years ago, all the kids in that hospital were orphans. The church took them all in, at least temporarily. I was the only one in that group of orphans to be adopted from the hospital. That's probably why I've been unconsciously avoiding the church out of guilt. It's also why 11 days ago, I told Tosaki it was my first time going to the church. The lights inside the church are on. I don't really like that priest, but there are things I need to ask him. Okay, let's go. I take a deep breath and put my hands on the heavy church doors. 
Father Kotomine, are you here? I step inside as I call out for him. There's nobody in this chapel. The lights are on, but the vast space is so quiet. I find myself more nervous than if it were dark. Hey, is anyone here? There's no reply. I can't keep going in further, so I might have to give up tonight. I whirl around when I hear a sound from behind me. Shiro Emiya, what brings you here at this hour? The suddenness of his appearance leaves me speechless. It is the dead of the night. I had hoped to go to sleep, but the look on your face tells me you, you want to pretend to perform some sort of penance, Shiro Emiya. Hodamine sounds bored and turns back through the door he came through. Oh, uh, hold on. Uh, I came here to ask you something. I know that. I don't intend to turn anyone away, no matter how odd an hour they choose to arrive. As Kodamine says so, he opens a door to the to the back of the church. Follow me. I'm sure you're here to talk about the Holy Grail War. I cannot allow such bloody talk here. Kodamine doesn't bother asking my opinion. He just disappears into the back of the church. I've come this far. I can't go home empty-handed. I steal myself. Determined not to let Kodamini intimidate me this time, and head toward the back of the church. Whoa. The outside's impressive. The inside's pretty intricate, too. Must be a courtyard. The garden and the passageways are too magnificent for Kodamini to live here alone. What are you doing? If you want to talk, come with me. The priest disappears around yet another corner. Damn, he's not waiting for me. I complain to myself as I chase after Kodamine. The church is a small labyrinth, so I don't have any choice but to follow Kodamine. We enter a modest stone chamber. This simple room, far from the elegance of that chapel and courtyard, must be Father Kodamine's private room. Please, forgive my inability to offer you anything in the way of hospitality. The priest makes his apology as he plops down onto a sofa. I smell the faint aroma of what must be wine. For the smell to linger in this room, he must really like wine. What is it? What is wrong? I thought you came here to talk. If you're going to just stand there like a fool, I'm going to be very annoyed. Nobody standing around like a fool! I was just looking around because this room seemed weird. I'm going to go home as soon as I finish my business here. That is a relief. I have no time to chat with children. I ask you that. I, I ask that you be brief. Bitch ass. Fuck you, pussy. This priest really gets on my nerves. I feel like he's reading my mind. And whenever I try to deal with him directly, I guess I just get intimidated. So, what is it that you want to talk about, Shiro Emiya? I thought I already told you everything I could. Don't lie, you knew all along. You knew my old man was Saber's master, and that the Holy Grail was destroyed. You're the overseer here to manage the Holy Grail, so you can't not know. Oh, did Saber tell you herself? Yeah, I heard that's how the last Holy Grail War ended. The priest falls silent, contemplating something. It is unusual for a servant to retain memories from their previous summons. Either Saber is defective or there is something unusual about her. Either way, I cannot say she is a normal servant. Heroic spirits do not retain their memories. As they are summoned in the past, present, and future, their retaining memories of these summons would create contradictions. They instead ha have memories only from their lives. Any memories made after their death once they become heroic spirits should not remain with them. He ponders this as if he still not isn't convinced. I get it. Kodamina doesn't know Saber hasn't fully become a holy uh, heroic spirit, so we can't truly understand the situation. That's not what's going on. Saber's circumstances are different from other servants. Different circumstances. I see. So this must be why you visited me. Very well, tell me. His haughty attitude pisses me off. 
But I don't have time to deal with that too. I don't like it, but this man might be able to give me a clear explanation. It seems Saber isn't dead yet. Her contract to become a heroic spirit isn't complete. It appears she wished for the Holy Grail just as she was dying, and so agreed to become a heroic spirit as the price of obtaining it. So see, she's not completely dead. She won't die until she obtains the Holy Grail, and that's when she'll become a servant in the normal sense. Not dead. Then Saber must still be in the cycle of reincarnation. Are you saying she is not removed from the flow of time like other heroic spirits? Yeah, I think that's what it means. Tosaka and Saber's basically been carved out of time. Tosaka said Saber's basically been carved out of time. I see. So rather than disappearing after her role is finished like typical heroic spirits, she will be summoned as a heroic spirit again and again until she obtains the Holy Grail. But since she has yet to obtain the Holy Grail, whatever her attempt to gain one fails, she is sent back to the moment of her death. And now she has been summoned for this war and retains her memories from the last. I really can't say I understand heroes who go out of their way to seek the Holy Grail only to die. But once she obtains it, the only fate awaiting her is being used by others as a servant. Right. Even if she gets the Holy Grail and has a wish granted, she'll just become another servant. I don't like that. Besides, what are servants? You say you, you use heroic spirits like familiars, but are, but are there contradictory heroic spirits like Saber? Who knows? I don't know a great deal about how that part of the system works. The permanence of the soul. The servant system was created to imitate that secret method. Only those who established this system would know more. The permanence of the soul. Well, I'm only speaking of how it was in the past. It really doesn't matter anymore, forget it. So, Shiroemiya, bottom line, you don't want your saber to be a servant any longer, correct? Is that what I want? I do think Saber's situation is fucked up. Aiming for the Holy Grail is all well and good. But afterwards, the only thing waiting for her is her disappearance. Even if someone other than King Arthur was chosen as king, and when King Arthur ceases to exist in our history, the heroic King Arthur will continue to be used by who knows how many others. And that seems wrong to me. So if she can stop being a servant and just live a normal life, that is impossible. The dead cannot come back to life. It does not matter if she is frozen in time. To us, Saber has already died. The power of the Holy Grail is what summoned her here. It is what keeps her here. And that is possible because she agreed to the conditions of becoming a holy spirit, a heroic spirit. If she does not seek the Holy Grail, she will not be summoned as a servant. But as long as she continues to seek it, no matter how long it takes, she will eventually become a complete servant. Even if she fails this time, she will have infinite other chances. Saber is frozen in time, so she cannot attempt two Holy Grail wars simultaneously, and she cannot re-attempt a trial once failed. If she failed a trial once, she will fail again no matter how many times she tries. She has already experienced it, and so the result cannot be changed. It is likely only a matter of time before she obtains the Holy Grail. This Holy Grail War is not the only chance he has at doing so. There are trials to obtain the Holy Grail in every era. If she fights in every war, she will eventually obtain the Holy Grail. After all, she is being summoned as a heroic spirit because she's under the belief that she will obtain the Holy Grail. From the moment she became a servant, the option of making her stop being a servant was non-existent. I knew it. As long as Saber seeks the Holy Grail, there's no way she can avoid becoming a servant. She'll stay like this forever, unless she decides to use the Holy Grail for herself. Even if this Holy Grail war ends and there's no need to fight anymore, if she doesn't obtain the Holy Grail, she just has to try again next time. The moment she obtains it, she turns into this so-called heroic spirit and is sent all across time. 
So whether she obtains the Holy Grail or not, she'll remain a servant forever. Well, not necessarily. If the Holy Grail is truly omnipotent, it may be able to save Saber. But you just said it was, that was impossible. Correct. There is no way to stop Saber from becoming a servant. But what you desire is for her to remain in this world, yes? That is not so difficult. A servant can remain here, human, once the Holy Grail War ends. But once she dies, she will return to she will return to where she was just before she dies. How do I do that? Heroic spirits and servants are similar, but there are differences. Normally, heroic spirits are not summoned with the will of their own. They are simply summoned as a tool to fulfill specific goals, after which they s disappear. But servants are different. They are the original body that was summoned by the Holy Grail. As such, they can live human lives just by remaining in this world. Can you do something like that? Saber said the Holy Grail disappeared the moment it was destroyed last time. Without the Holy Grail, I thought servants can't stay. Of course they cannot. The Holy Grail is what summons servants, and it's the master's role to maintain them during the following. That, however, is only possible because of the Holy Grail is aiding the master. Typically, a single mage cannot produce enough magical energy to maintain a servant. Without an incredible source of magical energy like the Holy Grail, servants will disappear. I figured, then... Well, if there is a shortfall, one need only compensate for it. That is all, that is, that is all supplying magical energy to servants is. Their natural tendency is to consume souls. If their existence starts to fade, they simply can replenish themselves with more souls. Telling me to attack random people like Shinji did. The hell? I can't let her do that. Anyway, Seven went and wanted a man here if that's what she had to do it. Is that so? Then you would have to use the contents of the Holy Grail. It's quite simple. If you truly want Seven to live as a human, have her drink from the Holy Grail. He must have anticipated my resistance. The look on his face tells me that this is the conclusion he wanted me to reach this, this whole time. Are you telling me to grant my wish using the Holy Grail? No. This has nothing to do with your wish. I'm talking about the contents of the Holy Grail. Did Ren not tell you? Servants are able to start a second life in this world by drinking the water of the Holy Grail. Though this method only establishes their position as a familiar in this age, their physical bodies remain that of a servant, and they would remain in this world only for so long as their master lives. But that would mean there's, there's no solution. Even if she were to stay in this world, it would be pointless if she's still a servant. She wouldn't be able to exist without magical energy from her master, and even if she had managed to live in this world for a long time, she'd just go back to that hill after her death. Saber would never agree to such a thing. She doesn't care about a second life. She insists she's going to use the Holy Grail for something else. But then again, does the Holy Grail, the key to all of this, even still exist in this world? I've heard enough. Basically, you're telling me to get the Holy Grail. But does the Holy Grail even exist? If my old man destroyed it, wouldn't it... Wouldn't it what? If the Holy Grail doesn't exist, then there's no reason to fight. This ridiculous fight to the death is pointless. There is no reason to fight, you say? Why bring that up now? You never had a reason to fight in the first place. He says that, and time seems to just stop. There's no reason to fight. He told me that before. I just become a master, and I didn't have much of a reason to fight. So at the time, what he said didn't sink in. I just ignored him, thinking he was being sarcastic. But what about now? There's a reason for me to fight. If there's a Holy Grail, I want to end this war, and if possible, I want to give the Grail to Saber. There is a reason for me to fight, and a perfectly good one at that. But why? Why do those simple words make me shake so much? I feel like I'm going to vomit up everything I've held in for so long. 
Let's leave that aside for now. This is not the time to open old wounds. A voice shatters the stillness that had locked up my thoughts. It's the voice of a man I don't want to hear. But that voice at least settles the wave of nausea I feel creeping up on me. The Holy Grail is here. The Holy Grail is only a receptacle anyway. Once it is gone, someone else will prepare another Holy Grail. So someone will prepare another one. Is the Holy Grail easy to make? Speaking only of the vessel, yes. Of course, it requires a certain amount of skill. But without the skill, the Holy Grail war would not be possible in the first place. The Holy Grail is not a cup that received the blood of God. It is based on a magical pot passed down from ancient times. If you are amazed, you should know about it. Utopia. The word is Greek and refers to a place that cannot be found or reached. It was said that an omnipotent pot that would grant any wish existed in such a place. And there were mages who tried to reproduce this omnipotent pot, which became the foundation for most mythology. There were three families, Einsburn, Makiri, and Tosaka. They spent many generations re researching the ritual to produce the omnipotent pot. 200 years ago, they managed to complete it. That was the first Holy Grail War. The ritual that attempted to open up a path by calling forth the omnipotent pot and was nothing more than an artificial Holy Grail. Einsburn. Is that Ilya's family? Correct. The Einsburns were able to use the bleh. Their ability to replicate the Holy Grail was unparalleled. But that alone cannot summon the Holy Grail. It also requires suitable land and a powerful spell. These are Tosakas and Makiris provided. At the time, the Church of the Mages Association were in the middle of a war. As such, a land in the Far East, where the Church held no sway, seemed ideal for the ritual. The Einsberg must have anticipated something like this would happen and invited the Tosaka clan to join forces. The Tosaka clan was the owner of the spiritual land in this area, and their master was a skilled necromancer. Without the Tosakas, summoning the Holy Grail would likely have been impossible for the Einsberg. Of course, the two families betrayed each other, thinking the situation should only be a system of checks and balances. The Tosakas brought in the Makiri family. The Makiris are a family with substantial history. They were obsessionally skilled at handling familiars. The Makiris were the ones who came up with the idea of summoning spells, c command spells to bind the servants. And thus the three worked together to summon the Holy Grail. But the moment they succeeded, a fight to the death broke out. The first summoning of the Holy Grail ended while the families were busy fighting each other. As time went on, they set down rules and called it a Holy Grail War, and eventually returned to working together, on the surface anyway. And so Sokka's provided the land and the system to model the servants. The Makiris provided the command spells to bind the servants, and the Einsburn provided the vessel for the Holy Grail to inhabit. That was the nature of their cooperation. I'm not sure what's so amusing about this, but the priest seems to enjoy telling me about it. But I see. They say the Holy Grail War is a ritual, but I didn't know Ilya and Tosaka's families were the ones who created the whole thing. The Einsburns prepared the Holy Grail, and as Kiritsugu betrayed them last time, they have to put their greatest trump card into play, which is to say, the Einsburn girl probably holds the Holy Grail. Huh? Ilya holds the Holy Grail? That's weird. I don't think I saw anything among her belongings that looked like a Holy Grail. Are you satisfied? I do not know what you are agonizing over. The Holy Grail is your only solution. Now that you understand that, go home. The battle is not over. For you to walk about without Saber at your side is simply insane. Not in your damn business. I'm aware Lance's master is still around. Hold on. There's one more thing I need to ask. Kodamine. Servants disappear once the Holy Grail disappears. That's what you said, right? I did? Do you take issue with that? 
Yeah, big time. I don't know who it is, but there was an eighth servant. According to Saber, he's been in this world since the previous war. What? What? I can see he's shocked. Kodamine's eyes go wide. What's going on, Kodamine? I came here thinking you might know something about this. There's a servant who didn't disappear, you say? It's not so strange. The previous war ended with Saber destroying the Holy Grail. So there's one servant who remained apart from Saber. Saber disappeared on her own. But if this servant desired to remain in the world, the answer is simple. They must have supplemented magical energy by feeding on souls to stay alive these past 10 years. Impossible. That servant was frighteningly powerful. If someone like that hung around for 10 years, someone like you or my old man would have detected them. I am well aware. Someone was likely hiding them. Either their master or... A mage who knew about the Holy Grail War but did not become a master. I know of one person, but it is not possible. Old man Makiri has long since retired. Kodamine must be satisfied as he gets up from the sofa. This is the end of our conversation. After learning what, you, what I just have, I cannot simply dismiss this matter, given my role as overseer. I shall investigate this servant. You should concentrate on your battle against the remaining Lancer. Kodamine heads to the exit, indicating that there's nothing else to discuss. There's definitely nothing more to be gained by staying here. I follow Kodamine out of the dark stone room. From there, he leads me to the entrance in silence. I leave the church, and behind me, Saber will die once she obtains the Holy Grail. I do hope you understand what that means, Shiro Emiya. The priest puts that to me, make to make, maybe to make certain I remember. He watches me from the door with a condescending twist on his lips. Saber will die if she obtains the Holy Grail. I don't need anyone to remind me of that. Saber's goal is to obtain the Holy Grail only, she, but she doesn't want to use its power for herself. And as long as she obtains the Holy Grail, nothing will bind Saber anymore. She'll, she'll be freed from going back to the point right before her death, and she will truly die. Why the sudden change of heart? You're not one to give warnings like that. Oh, I'm just happy to see you supporting Saber. Think of this as a kindness. The moment Saber obtains the Holy Grail, she will disappear. My advice to you, if you wish to be with her, you should give up the Holy Grail. It doesn't make sense. I can't keep Saber here without the Holy Grail. You do not need to rely on the Holy Grail. It is the same for that other servant we spoke of earlier. If you want Saber to stay, all you need to do is feed her souls, am I wrong? Fuck you! I won't allow that! I glare at the priest. I see. That is a shame. My glare has no effect on him, he just laughs in amusement. Then you'll just have to place your hopes on what is inside the Holy Grail. Even if your servant does not desire it, you just need to keep one command spell. That way your wish will be granted. He's saying, it doesn't matter if Saber doesn't want it. If I'm a master, I just need to force her to drink from the Holy Grail, using the power of the command spell. Oh, should I not have said that? No, don't glare at me like that. I was only warning you. You are certainly free to respect Saber's wishes. It's her life. Neither you nor I have any right to intervene. I shall investigate that other servant you mentioned. I should have something by tomorrow. You are more than welcome to return here should you wish. The church doors close. I glance up at the towering church before I turn to leave. I cross the bridge at night. This is the path I once walked with Saber. I was just looking at the scenery, not thinking about anything at the time. Saber will die when she obtains the Holy Grail. I do hope you understand what that means, Shiro Emiya. I know. I don't need him to tell me that. But why is everything so complicated? Saber shouldn't obtain the Holy Grail. 
but the only one who can save her is the Holy Grail. My advice to you if you wish to be with her, you should give up the Holy Grail. If you want Sebe to stay, then all you need to do is feed her souls. I can't do that, and even if I asked her to do it, she would refuse. She would choose to disappear as if it were the alternative. She would disappear and then she'll have to do another Holy Grail war all over again later. You just need to keep one command spell. That way your wish will be granted. Shut up! Kodamine's words are poison. I can't get rid of them. In a rage, I smash my fist against the nearby rail, desperately hoping to clear my mind. I hear an echoing metallic clang. There's no other sound. Not so much as a car or another person passing by. Damn! Why am I getting all worked up? I lean against the rail, grumbling to myself. I know I should just ignore Kodamine, but there's some sort of power to his words. I can't ignore them. What do I want to do? What am I fighting for? In the beginning, it was stopping the Holy Grail War, but when did that become secondary? Did it happen when I started stubbornly fight? When I started to stubbornly fight on my own? Did it happen when I realized how helpless I am and started co to cooperate with Saber? Or did it happen when I made a sword for her after our souls intertwined that night in the ruins? No, that's all nonsense. I don't need to think about it. Since the beginning, my mind has been made up since I met her in the shed. The sight of her, illuminated by the moonlight. That would have been fine, had I not shared that dream of her past, and so not known any better. It would have been over without me even noticing, but I did find out. I knew I couldn't leave her alone. I started to hope that I could somehow not lose her. I wish to stay this way. I want to keep seeing her smile. The image of the girl watching the sunset alone on the hill, strewn with swords. My chest hurts whenever I think of that scene. She never took any time for herself. That always bothered me. Kirisugu always said not to make a girl cry. I must prefer that smiling face. On, I must prefer. I must prefer a smiling face to her tears. That's why I was so angry Saber never smiled. But then when I told her to smile, she always replied that she would rather see me smile. That's... That's like looking at an unreachable star through a telescope. Damn. I look up at the night sky. I stare up at the star I can never reach. A trickle. I don't know how it formed but I feel a tear slide down my cheek. I love her. I say it to nobody. As dense as I may be, I have to at least admit how I feel. I can't stop this feeling anymore. I realize I've fallen in love with her, so much so that thinking about it can bring me to tears. Welcome home, you are out late. I hear Tosaka's voice as I arrive. She's standing at the entrance. Tosaka, why are you? This is not the place to talk. You look, you look exhausted, so follow me. She grabs my hand and without waiting for me to reply, drags me down the hall. And she brings me to her room. Here, T. It must have been cold out there. She's awkward about it, but she's being considerate. Yeah, thanks. Honestly, the hot tea is comforting. It took me a good hour to walk home from the neighboring town. I walked slowly so I was cold to the bone. I need, man, fuck. How long is this chapter gonna be, bro? Like my throat, my throat is, uh, my throat is strained right now. So, you went to Kirei's place? As usual, she doesn't beat around the bush. I get it. Tosaka must have known what I was going to do from the very beginning. But she didn't stop me. She just waited for me to come home. And now she's even made me tea. I feel like a new man now. 
Now that my mind is made up and I appreciate Osaka's thoughtfulness, which is probably why I say, yeah, I went. There was something I wanted to ask him about. I don't hide anything. I'm being honest with her. I see. Then I won't ask for details. You're okay with that too, right? Yeah. Wasn't a fruitful conversation anyways. I just wanted to check with him about the current situation. I see. But honestly, I'm surprised. I'm surprised that Saber isn't a full servant. The strongest of all servants being the most incomplete is a bad joke. Yeah. And Saber didn't have to end up as a servant. She nods in agreement. This is funny. You and Archer might have gotten along under different circumstances. He said the same thing you did earlier. Huh? Archer. You mean your Archer? Yeah. Archer once said that he regretted his own actions, so he didn't want it. So he didn't want Saber to make the same mistake. Huh? Why would he be worried about Saber? I thought he hated Saber. Yeah, but maybe he has some kind of connection with her. The first time he fought Saber, he was obviously going easy on her. I thought it was weird from the very beginning. Oh, really? But Saber said she didn't recognize Archer. Really? But Saber was a king, right? She might have been. She might not have. She might not have known every single citizen in her country. She could have forgotten about them too. You know, if you're going down that route, the possibilities are endless. If you can't remember someone's face, that's as good as not knowing them. That's not necessarily true. According to legend, there were many knights that were unfortunately driven out of Camelot. He might have been one of them. If so, he might have been trying to hide his identity not from me, but from Saber. Osaka's unusually chatty tonight. It's probably her way of trying to be considerate. Maybe not particularly effective, but Osaka's a good person. She's being pretty relentless, but she still lends a helping hand. She's got kind of a big sister thing going on. We drink tea for a few more words, a few mi more minutes. Osaka looks, turns and looks straight at me. Guess she's run out of patience. So, what do you want to do, Shiro? I'm going to take her on a date tomorrow. I can't think of anything else. It's a spur of the moment idea I came up with on my walk back home. But then... I don't know where the somber move from earlier went. Because Osaka makes the most bizarre face. She bursts out into uncontrollable laughter. Hold on, wait. I wasn't ready to hear this. That's unbelievable. It's so selfish of you, Shiro. Damn, I'm dumb. I should have seen this coming. Shut up. What's wrong with me being selfish? No, this is not the time for it, but I'm, I'm not going to let you get in our way. Oh, no, 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 Shiro. It's just so funny. Sasaka <laughs> slaps my back hard. She holds her stomach with her other hand, laughing so hard she's nearly in tears. Damn. Too much fucking dialogue. You're about to give me a sore throat. I think this is the worst she's ever treated me. <laughs> I haven't laughed this hard in a long time. Well, I'm happy for you. None of that was funny to me. Well, good luck with your date. I'm rooting for you too. So Sokka says that kindly, doing a complete about face from a second ago. Yeah, I'll try my best. <clears throat> Honestly, that came out of left field. When she says it like that, all I can do is nod. Make sure you pipe, bro. You gotta pipe. If you don't pipe on the first date, fuck is you doing? I don't I don't believe in that. It's bullshit. I go back to my room. Saber is still asleep, and the house is peaceful as if there's nothing happening. It rained today, but what about tomorrow? I look up at the clouds slowly passing overhead. Unlike me as it is, I pray for a sunny day tomorrow.
Whew. Okay. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoy, like, subscribe, leave a comment. I'm gonna mouth that into the next one. That's some crazy ass shit, bro. Like, oh my goodness. What the hell? Um. What was it? What was I about to do? What was I about to say? Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I watched Phase Zero, so a lot of this shit, I, a lot of this prequel shit, I already understand. But there were there are a lot of things that I did forget and stuff, so some things are a bit of a surprise. I ain't know shit about Saber. And honestly, I didn't know Kiritsugu broke the I didn't know he broke it. I thought I thought I thought he wished for world peace. And then and then like the shit Tosaka was talking about was basically that. Like wishing for world peace is a dumb wish because if it's world peace, that's just gonna cause fucking chaos. World peace is gonna cause chaos because ain't nobody gonna be doing shit. It's it's lit like it's like it's like like it's gonna end itself, right? That's what I thought. That's what I had thought happened, right? So I was like, all right, shit. I didn't know. I don't. I don't remember him destroying it. But don't leave yet. Don't leave yet, guys. Don't leave yet. All right. When you get to this part, no can do. We'll be fasting today. This part right here, if y'all remember. No, nope, we're going on a fast today. <laughs> Why you say it like that? They say that when an army runs out of provisions, they tend to find themselves back into a corner. With no time to think, I find myself just blurting that out. Shiro? Um, what does that mean? Was it confusing? What I'm trying to say is that we're not going to have lunch today. We had a hearty breakfast of Hamburg steak this morning, so I thought we could skip lunch. I'm not sure what drove me to say that, but honestly, I'm not hungry right now anyway. I'm taking the time to spar with Saber, so I want to keep training. So let's keep training. Come on, pick up your Shinai Saber. I point the tip of my Shinai at Saber. Please, wait, Shiro. This conversation isn't going nowhere. There is no sense in saying we should not eat lunch just because we had a large breakfast. Oh, uh, what? What are you doing, Saber? Give me my sh get the Shinai back. I will not. There is not much time. As your servant, I demand that my master start preparing our meal right this instant. What the f- Whoa. Hold on a minute. Saber can be a little weird, but today she's going overboard. Saber, what do you mean there's not much time? Do you have plans? I do not, which is why I'm saying we should have lunch. Yeah, but I just said we're skipping lunch. Which is ridiculous. Do you still not understand, even after me repeatedly saying so? I will say this one last time, Shiro. Please, make lunch right now. Saber protests so intensely, I think she might jump at me right now. Just when I was about to agree, unused to seeing her like this as I am. Oh, I hear a stomach growling. Saber's stomach growls, giving the usual signal of her hunger. Was that Saber? Are you really that hungry? No, I'm not especially hungry, but it appears my body requires nutrients. I guess that happens when you move around a bunch. But Saber, how disgraceful. You may be a servant, but if you forget your manners entirely, Shiro might end up hating you. That is untrue. I am a servant, so the only way I could def I could disappoint Shiro was by being defeated. I'm not gonna be disappointed because you lost, but that doesn't mean there aren't other ways for you, other ways, other things you can do that might seem odd, Saber. That is all. Besides, my stomach growling because I am hungry is only proof that my body is functioning properly. If that annoys you, then blame Shiro for failing to feed me. Saber glares at Ilya, who then glares at me since. According to Saber, I'm the problem here. Also, the stomach growling is the result of gastrointestinal response called hunger pangs. The stomach is constantly expanding and contracting, and this movement becomes more intense when the stomach is empty. The contraction of the stomach compresses the air inside, 
which makes us sound more familiar with. On the other hand, the stomach is also affected by the auto auto autonomic nerves as well. It is constantly moving, which means the stomach doesn't only rumble when it's empty. The stomach's movements, the cause of it rumbling so loudly is, I'm hungry, my stomach is about to rumble, people wouldn't know I'm hungry if they hear it, so I need to hold it in. Such thoughts may be, makes a, may, such thoughts make a person tense up, which causes their stomach to contract even more. In other words, ah, I get it. You were just mad because you were hungry. That's why you were all moody. Seriously, I can't believe you're still hungry even after that big meal this morning, you glutton. Ooh, now that you mention it, I did know this because she was all quiet, but she ate twice as much as Ren. I didn't know Saber was such a glutton. That is not true. I am not a glutton. Ren is just a light eater. Shiro, surely you understand. No, I guess you're right. I've noticed she always eats. I noticed she always eats until the very end. I think if she really worked at it, she could eat just as much as Fujine. That is absolutely untrue. What have you been watching this whole time, Shiro? Huh? Well, I'm just being honest. Besides, your stomach always rumbles around this time. Glutton or not, I think you just get hungry fast. I knew it! Saving, you're so immodest! Ilya leaps up joyfully, excited to dress Saber down. Saber, on the other hand, who had been completely distraught earlier, is back to her usual self like nothing happened. Saber, um, aren't you mad? I am not angry. As Ilya's Ville mentioned, I have been consuming a great deal of food. I may have been pushing myself a bit in order to keep my stem that is, magical energy reserves high to reduce the burden on Shiro. Oh, all right. Saber can only replenish magical energy on her own. She sleeps to reduce her consumption of magical energy. And she probably wanted to stockpile as much energy by eating food. Sorry, I wasn't exactly being considerate. Even though we formed a connection, that doesn't mean I can give you everything, I, everything you need. And she requires 10 times more magical energy than I can give, maybe more. Servants consume massive amounts of magical energy just to keep existing. But the amount of magical energy Saber can generate in a day doesn't cover all she needs to just to exist. It is alright, as long as you understand. But more importantly, Shiro. Yeah, I know. I actually made lunch already. We're having a bento today, so we can eat them right... No, we should take this time to train a bit more. Oh. Saber gives me back my shin eye and takes a ready position to start a match. She's about to- Shut the fuck up, Siri. She's about to beat the shit out of us. Saber. I thought we were going to eat. That would not be necessary. You mentioned you would rather do this, so... A chill runs down my spine. I realize I've made a terrible mistake. Wait, wait, please, calm down. Saber, you're... You're really mad, aren't you? I realize how timid I sound. <laughs> Is there something about my baby? Nigga, yes! She don't put her armor on! No! Of course not. Is there something in my behavior that suggests otherwise to you? You're absolutely different! You didn't even change outfits! Her armor? I is she wielding the Shenai while fully armored? Is she- She is! We shall continue with light training as usual. Are you serious? Don't you think this is a little immature of you? She isn't listening. I'm in hit with the force of all of a lightning strike. Freed from a position as an educator, Saber truly bears her claws. They about to send me to Tiger Doge. I didn't think they were actually gonna send me to Tiger Dojo. <laughs> Hello there. 
This is Tiger Dojo, the spiritual world which lifts those who die of minor misunderstandings up to heaven. And I'm the assistant, angel of the afterlife, number one. Know this, you must live every second of your life cautiously or your wounds will last a lifetime. If you make fun of someone with no sense of humor, you should brace for death. Looks like it, but Shiro looks so cute when Saber's one strikes at his soul fleeting his body. This kid has the twisted idea of what's cute. So actually, this corpse is in remarkably good shape. Isn't it rare for him to be in such good shape? You're right. It's somewhat anticlimactic. Wanna mess with it? Let's do it. Okay, let's begin our alterations. First, to prevent the body from being revived by mistake, we're going to turn both hands into Gatling guns. Say yes, say! Okay, and we're done. How's it feeling? How does it feel to get your whole body modified? We did at least respect your wishes and not operate on your brain, which would have been the final modification. We stopped. Now, you must choose between joining the Tiger's Angels or being brainwashed and made into a machine. Your choice. I'll just kill you both. This is bad, Supreme Ruler. The experiment is using his mighty powers to escape its bonds. Yeah, he's going berserk! He'll destroy our base! We may have created our own greatest enemy! What have we done? We should have started with his brain! I think people normally start with the brain! Huh? I just had the craziest dream. Could that have been the afterlife? Have you come too, Shiro? I am ashamed that after all after all this practice, you cannot even dodge a single blow from me. So please, dodge this next one. I am using kendo techniques, so you should be able to enjoy this, so long as you properly brace yourself. NIGGA, I'M UPSIDE DOWN! NO! 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 YOU STILL WANT TO KEEP GOING? Of course. We still have 10 minutes until noon. Let us keep going until we reach our limit as usual. Saber Shinai strikes furiously with a loud cracking sound. I pass out once again. I should be more careful. Saber is the sort to really devote herself to taking revenge if you make her angry. Okay, and I need to check this tiger dojo. Okay, it looks like the enemy's gone. Alright, so this is the Tiger Dojo for after I after Caster killed me. Oh, my head, there's still a bite mark on my head. Uh, let's get ourselves together. Life is a little bypass at least straight to the bottom of the valley. Let's start Tiger Dojo, the rescue segment that saves Shiro, whose chances of coming back to this world are getting slimmer all the time. Okay, but Tiger. This dead end isn't all that different from the last one. Saber went berserk and stabbed Shiro again. AGAIN?! AGAIN?! This happened before?! You're right, but it's slightly different. Since this dead end could have been avoided if Shiro had tried a little harder, I don't think it's all Saber's fault. Oh, now that you mention it, Saber's not here. Hmm. I guess she doesn't get as broken up about it if it's only half her fault. And so, we can operate Tiger Dojo without having to worry this time. Yeah, but there's really not much to say. The choices won't really be subtle anymore either. The story is approaching its climax, so you won't get a good ending if you don't shape up. If you can just defeat Caster, there'll only be one enemy left. Fucking liar. Win, don't let your guard down. 
A crisis offers opportunity. Buck up and fight. Ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay, well done. Well, see you next time at Tiger Dojo. See you, Shiro. They're very wonderful cheerleaders, you know.